district uh, to order. Um, the first thing uh, I'd like to begin with so we can have uh, an accurate record of attendance is if our uh, phone in callers could all identify each other um, uh, taking turns and then mute themselves so that we don't have feedback. And star six is how you unmute so you can speak. Carl, this is Kim Robertson. I'm on the call. With Thank you. With Matt Robertson. Excellent. Kim and Matt Robertson from Stockbridge. This is Irene Sintef. I'm on the call with Craig Cole. And you are a, 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 a Stockbridge. This is Rob Gardner from Rochester. Hello, Rob. Thank you. Sorry. You bet. This is Charity Colton Martin. from Stockbridge. Hi, Charity. Thank you. Mark Pelletier, Stockbridge. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? This is, this is Keith Spilecki and Lisa Spilecki from Stockbridge. Hi, Keith and Lisa. This is uh, Joanne Jim and Jeff. Go ahead. Was that you, Joanne? Yeah, Joanne and Jeff Mills, Stockbridge. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. Hello. Jim Shan, Stockbridge. Hi, Jim. Welcome. Thank you. Greg Piccarello, Stockbridge. Hi, Greg. Thank you. Anyone else that hasn't chimed in yet? Did you get Nancy Woolley? Stockbridge. Uh, I did not hear Nancy, but thank you. And uh, the, the name that was also from Stockbridge when I was uh, talking over you, I'm sorry. Hi, Carl. It's Lori Scott. Hi, Lori. Thank you. Hey, it's Tim Pratt. Hi, Tim. How are you? Good, you? I am well. Thank you. Anyone else? Caitlin McKinstry from Stockbridge. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Did we get everyone? I know one of these numbers is Orca Media, and that's that's okay. Hi, Wade or Mason. Um, okay, uh, I think we've got everyone uh, uh, appropriately uh, tagged. Um, so we will go with uh, adjustments to the agenda. Um, I have two. I. Uh, um, actually, they can be in real time okay, as I uh, think them through further. So uh, um, I can save them for there. Do we have any other uh, adjustments to the agenda from uh, administration or board members? Carl, I need to add executive session. Okay, uh, we're going to add an executive session for personnel, but um, contract. Sorry, personnel. Thank you. Uh, if we could add, uh, ba, 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 ba. Um, we can add executive session as uh, item number eight to the agenda. Uh, any others? Uh, Bonnie, Bruce, Tara? No, I'm all set. Board folk? Okay. Um, so... We now have a uh, uh, public comment. Um, we really haven't done public comment uh, in, in this format before. Um, I feel like I should remind everybody that to be able to comment at a, uh, a, 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 a municipal board meeting, you, you need to be a, a voting member of uh, one of the two municipalities or you need to uh, uh, be formally recognized. Uh, to, to have such comment. Um, in general, my suggestion would be we also have a public comment um, session after we've had the discussion items around the budget and uh, the annual meeting. Um, so I think in efforts to try to make this go as smoothly and as cleanly as possible, um, you are certainly welcome to, co to, 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 to comment in the initial uh, uh, public comment session. The formal um, uh, 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 bylaws of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified Board uh, allow everyone to comment for up to five minutes um, once during a public comment session. 
Um, we generally are, 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 are kind of fast and loose with that, but I think um, the, import, the, the, the point I'm trying to get at here is having a public, uh, having public comment before we've had a board discussion around the budget and the annual meeting and those sorts of things. Um, it, it, I, I would ask that if, you're, if you want to discuss or weigh in on those sorts of topics that you wait till after you've, you, you, you've had the board discussion, and in general, normally, normally we're 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 more freewheeling about participation during the port the the, the, the parts of the meeting that are not public comment. Um, we are going to try to um, uh, ramp that down a little bit just so the board can move through what the board needs to do. Um, we certainly, um, again, will there's a public comment session before we go into executive session. So uh, there, there is ample time for, 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 for people to react. Um, so my suggestion would be that if possible, we uh, take notes and uh, uh, save the comments for after, uh, uh, you know, after the board deliberation. But we do have a uh, public comment uh, session that's going to begin in just a minute after we do, because Ethan is here. Are you not, Ethan? Didn't I see you come in? I am here. Okay, Ethan, as our uh, uh, de facto timekeeper, let's go through and uh, uh, break down uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, information. Um, so how much time do we want to allocate for uh, a public comment, the first public comment? 15 minutes, 20 minutes? I mean, what have we done in the past? I don't recall. I think usually 20 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say 20. Us. I was going to say 22. Okay, so then let's do uh, uh, item number three, public comment, 20 minutes. Item number four, board comment, 20 minutes. Uh, discussion items, uh, annual uh, budget and annual meeting, uh, 30 apiece. Knowing that we'll, we, we, we may well get in the weeds and go longer than that. Does that uh, does that feel good, or do we want to add more? Okay, I, I, I think that should work. That sounds good to me. Okay, so let's let's at least uh, pencil in the idea that five point one and five point two budget and annual meeting will each be thirty minutes. Um, so then, uh, act to approve budget, act to set an annual meeting uh, date, and act on colonial uh, colonial custodial. <laughs> rent <laughs> Um, I think probably those will just be the, 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 the formal acting and moving. So five minutes each for those. Another 20 minutes for the public comment. And then another 20 for the uh, executive session. If that, it's not that long. Okay. But. I would love to. Be <laughs> so does that sound good to, to all the board members? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, then we will go into uh, the first uh, uh, 20 minute uh, public comment session. Um, does anyone have uh, anything they'd like to bring to the table before we discuss the uh, budget and the annual meeting? Okay, remember it's star six. Hey, to hey Carl, it's Tim Pratt. I do have a question. Sure, thank go ahead, Tim. Uh, are these final audited numbers or not? Uh, the numbers in the budget are not final. Uh, we, we do not have uh, final audited numbers uh, yet, Tara. Do we? Have they resolved that? Tara, are you there? Sorry, I couldn't find my button. Um, no, the audit is not 100% complete yet. Still a work in progress. Do we have a uh, Do we have a time frame for when that would be uh, available to Tim and others? I am hoping very soon. I've got to finish up my final review of the reports, and then if I have any additional corrections, I got to get them back to the auditors. So they have given you They have given you a draft for you to uh, go through question and bless. Um, yes. So there, we, we we are fairly close to the light at the end of of, of the audit tunnel. Yes. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, Tim, I can say that uh, Tara has used 
uh, the draft numbers that that, that she's been provided to help inform um, the uh, uh, budget entries that are submitted. Um, but uh, they they have not been uh, completely. Uh, we we, are, we have not been able to uh, match them to audited numbers. We hope to uh, be able to if we if we do go forward and set a uh, end of June uh, meeting date. Uh, Tara, what do you think the odds are that we would have audited numbers to be able to to be able to mail out to people at that time when we send the report? You know, as opposed to when we warn the. Do you, as a board, have to approve the audit? Okay. So once I get the the draft final audit to, and I agree with what the auditors are saying, is when I would then submit it to you as a board to review and accept. And then once you have accepted it, then it could go out or be available, I should say, to your public by request. Okay, so the protocol, so the protocol for us to be able to put a column in the uh, in, in, in the booklet that we're gonna send out, the budget booklet that we need to mail. Um, for us, we would have to, we would have to have a, we would have to get the numbers and sort it out with the auditors. We would have to have a special meeting where we accepted those numbers, so then we could release them and plug them into the uh, uh, spreadsheets we're sending out in, in the budget booklet. Is that is that accurate, Tara? The numbers that are in there would just you would just disclose that it's their un unaudited numbers at this point until you've confirmed your audit. So we would confirm the audit, then we could say that these are audited numbers, and yeah. we would adjust them to to, to to reflect. But the majority yeah. of the numbers that are in there, while labeled unaudited are from the draft audit so they're pretty pretty correct Is yeah there's just i mean there, there's only a few things that we're really questioning on the audit still at this point that i just need to pass over finally so okay tara, I'm, I'm okay with the rest of it at this point tara correct me if i'm wrong but this is for um our entire as su wide is that correct yes so, so you're all waiting on me. Just do not have audited numbers yet, and neither. No, the only one that I have up. approved and released is for one district. Otherwise, all of the audits are sitting with me right now, waiting for my final blessing before I send them to the boards. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome, Jim. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Does anyone else in the public have another question? Um, I do, Kayla McKinstry. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Kayla. So my question is, so the budget that's going to be voted on, does this include separate operating expenses for the elementary school in Rochester and the high school, or are they just lumped together? I believe, I believe they are blended numbers. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's blended numbers uh, for stock for, for all the Aristotle schools. Okay. Um, my question is why is the high school still being included in the budget because we're supposed to have only one one building in rochester that was part of the agreement why are we still supporting this building because we're obligated to support it so we can dispose of it which we haven't uh, uh been able to uh complete that 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 process of it's it's a uh a, a a uh, ongoing uh, affair that has been um like most everything else uh, uh derailed by uh our inability to uh have meetings i'm hoping that once we deal with the most pressing issue which is the budget we can uh, resume the uh, uh uh building conversations um as to uh, how we can 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 move on from having a ton of space and uh, a ton of expenses this is Irene. And Tess, um, I don't attend a lot of these meetings, but every time I do, I'm hearing the same thing once again. And I would prefer you not use COVID-19 as an excuse for this. Why can't we have high school numbers separated out from the elementary school numbers? Um. I'm not sure. Well, Tara, could we could we produce a report that shows um, cost by building um, for the for budgetary purposes? You know, we we need as a board for the unified district we need to, to pay for you know electricity, for fuel, oil, for internet, 
Um, and we have not, uh, uh, in general, uh, I, I don't believe Rochester ever separated those numbers out um, when they were when they were just Rochester district. And well, they're not Rochester district anymore. And anybody who's ever done a budget knows that if you've got two buildings, you should have them as different line items. This is just an excuse that I hear. There's no reason why you can't you folks cannot break that out. Um, Tara, is there a reason why we couldn't produce a report that showed that? I could attempt it. I'm not making any guarantees. I mean, you're still using portions of the high school building for your elementary school, correct? I believe uh, that is correct. true. Yes. So, I mean, the, the building itself is still being utilized for elementary middle school purposes. So if they're just, if you're just looking to know how much money we're spending on electricity and fuel oil for that building, then yes, I would think that was something that we could break out based on the service and delivery tickets. But okay, well, building that's, being that's utilized good. for elementary and middle school, so it's not really a separate expenditure for the usage well, of why, your school why district. are you using why are you using the high school for the elementary school i thought when i voted to merge the districts i voted based on the fact that we were each going to have an elementary school i didn't vote for the fact that rochester was going to have a campus environment and so i feel like i've been duped and now you're telling me that you don't even break out the budget uh, line item per each building. So I'm being double duped. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Uh, your opinion and, and, and uh, feelings have been, have been noted. We will certainly, we can certainly try to produce uh, a, a document that shows where, uh, where the expenditures are uh, for which building we certainly have different electric meters, I believe, for all three buildings, for example. But, um, you know, the, the, for the purposes of the budget, we have to uh, uh, move forward with, uh, you know, the, the expenses we have. Um, certainly, we hoped that uh, we'd be farther along in the process of, of uh, dealing with uh, uh, right-sizing the, the, the Rochester campus. But it's a complicated issue. Um, we've had, you know, we have we, we have certainly not, I, I, I really don't think it, you can find online all the minutes for the various meetings we have. I think we have not uh, a kick the can down the road. I'm sorry that you feel that you're, you're, you're being double duped, but uh, I can assure you that that's not um, our intention. Um, we're this trying to go through the problems as best we can. But thank you for so, uh, your opinion. We will certainly uh, 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 take it into consideration. As we can move. I interrupt for just one minute? This is Janie Feinberg. And I'm going to be really honest here. My focus is, and I won't hide it, the academic part of it, the finances, I really leave to Amy and Carl and all those people who know that much better than I. But I will. But one thing I do know, this is an honest board. This is a board that has tried to do the best we possibly can, especially under these circumstances and getting a building that we didn't know what was going to happen. It was the first time. And the one thing we have not done is try in any way to, to fool or dupe the public. I'm sorry that it seems that way. And I do see how you would want the different expenses. And you obviously know a lot more about I do than line items and things like that. So I can't speak to that. And I hope we do take your suggestions because obviously it's not where it should be. The one thing I can tell you, we did not try to dupe, the, dupe you. I, I am proud of this board and I've worked with many school boards in my educational career. This is a good board. This is a board who wants to do the best. And if we've made mistakes, I hope we listen and I hope we take what the experts have to say, but we did not try to dupe anybody. 
Uh, well, Caitlin then, McKinstry, um, I have another question. What happens if the budget does not pass? Um, if the budget does not pass by statute, the board is entitled to spend 87% of last year's budget uh, and continue to uh, move forward to uh, vote a budget. Um, okay. Well, other things what that are in the meeting, other things that happen in the meeting, for example, um, uh, voting for uh, the the person that uh, my seat is up for election. I believe is it Amy? Are you up for election this year in, on the Rochester side, or is it Megan? I'm not sure, but there's so if, if the budget if the budget was defeated, um, the results of the election for uh, my seat. For, for the uh, matching Rochester seat uh, uh, would still hold forward. The board could, uh, you know, warn a second vote, I think 10 days, depending on how the, 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 the meeting is, is handled with uh, Robert Rules order wise. The board can warn budget meetings 10 days or 30 days uh, after to try to resolve and, 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 and put, the, put the budget together. 87% um, of uh, our current budget would certainly mean cutting staff. I, or mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I shouldn't say certainly. I would assume every, you know, I, I would assume that we, we would not be able to uh, maintain current staffing if we had to uh, work with an 87% budget come September. But I can't, I can't say that for certain. But that, that so you would rather, so you would rather cut staff than cut a building, is what you're saying. If the budget does not pass, you would prefer to make staff cuts than cut a building that um, is costing that's, money. You're, 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 you're putting words in my mouth, and we're getting near the five-minute five, five minute, uh, 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 uh Right, because you and Jeannie have, have taken putting, up most of the public comment. Um, I cannot the, – the, the, the reality around cutting staff is that you can you, – you, that is a thing you can do um, in an immediate way. You can't dispose of we 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 can't wish the building away. The building the the, the building has to be. I mean, if the town of Rochester. Okay, okay, was, Carl. I know you're. But to being the you and Jeannie talking, you've taken up a lot of public comment. So the point is, is we were promised this building would what would be done with it. You guys would that Rochester choose a building after the building study came out. Well, the building study has come out and now you guys are talking about, well, now we need to wait till the end of the audit process. We are years into this merger, years. And we're about to lose subsidies from the state for the merger and we are still paying for this building, which quite frankly, if you look at Stockbridge School versus Rochester Elementary School, we utilize every inch of that building. The building in Rochester, you have so much space in there, but it is being refused to reallocate space and turn it into different purposes. And we're still paying for a building under the guise that it's, oh, we need the space for the music and the art. Quite frankly, you, don't. you need to reallocate space. On top of that, children enrolling, enrollment is going down. So, and we're still paying, what was it, 30000 a year to keep this building open? So, when are you guys actually going to fulfill on the promise that, yes, we are going to choose a building? When is that going to happen? You need to know now. Because at this point, I'm going to vote no on the budget, and I'm going to tell everybody who listens to me or wants to hear what I have to say to vote no until the building goes away thank you for your opinion um does anyone else have a comment okay uh hearing none let's move into board comment i had two things that i wanted to point out um for uh lindy and uh hello 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 yeah this is keith spilecki i was trying to make a comment ah okay i'm sorry keith go ahead that's quite all right. I have to say that I am in total agreement with the prior speaker. Um, I'm not sure I understand the concept of a consolidation. We went into this with three buildings. We still have three buildings. Was there not a plan in place to address how we were going to uh, consolidate this district? 
because it certainly doesn't sound out like it. It sounds as though we're looking to put a plan together after we voted to consolidate. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, Keith, it's a good question. Um, when we, uh, in the uh, articles of, of, of agreement, which I don't have in front of me, but one of the one of the things the board committed to was to undertake a study to figure out how to consolidate in Rochester from one building to two buildings. We have not been able to, uh, we, we've gotten a study together that tells us some things that are that are, are, are hard to, uh, uh, to, 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 to wrap our heads around in terms of the costs of renovating either of those buildings uh, going forward. Um, we have uh, versus, versus the uh, uh, costs that uh, are, are necessary to uh, reconfigure and make appropriate changes in Stockbridge. Um, so we have not, you know, there's, there is a, uh, uh, as I understand it, a, uh, a, a group in Rochester that is approaching it from the Rochester side of wanting to, uh, assimilate one of those buildings. Um, I believe they're leaning towards the high school, but they have not gotten together enough of, a, 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 a or, or done enough work to, to have made the board a proposal because, the, the 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 cleanest way to divest one of those buildings is for the town of Rochester to buy it for a dollar. Um, they would have to choose to do that. We can't just give it to them for a dollar and, and, and say, "Here's your building. Thanks for the dollar." Um, we have so we are trying to work on that from the community side. There's a group in Rochester that's working on that piece. We're trying to work at it from the educational side, but you know we've been. The, 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 the biggest piece for us has been trying to, you know, uh, properly educate the kids, which has meant that we haven't been able to completely get out of the high school building because we don't have, we, you know, we, 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 haven't, we, we haven't made the decision that that's the building we're going to get rid of. Um, and we haven't made the decision that the, the elementary school building is the, the, the building we're going to get rid of. Um, because the engineering study, quite frankly, showed us pros and cons for each building. There was not, there was not a clean move to this building um, uh, 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 answer from from that study. So that's where the board is. The board is has, is, is is trying to work through it as best we can. Um, and you, know, you have the right to vote the budget down. You have the right to vote me out of office. Um, Rochester voters have the right to vote uh, whichever Rochester person out is is. Uh, um, uh, up for re-election and, and, and install someone that feels differently. But this is this, I, this is where we are, and I I, I, I echo what Jim said. We're being transparent and honest, and trying to work with it as best we can, keeping uh, a children's education as the, the most important piece. Well, in addition to the community piece, the the board created a subcommittee which. Um, includes both members from the public and members from Stockbridge and Rochester that had some meetings earlier this year and they um, hadn't quite come to a conclusion on sort of wrapping up their um, their findings until the current situation with not being able to have public meetings came into place. So that's also put a pause on, on our work from that front. Carl, this is Kim Robertson. Can I uh, say something? Uh, sure. Let's. Uh, we we. I think we're probably well over the twenty minutes we had for. No, we got about we got about two minutes left. Ah, okay. Great. Kim, Thank okay, you. we can probably run you a few. Know, in all fairness, the board is taking over more of the time than the public is. I right. agree. So, so this is right. Robertson, and I am. Um, I just want to say, all right, if if Rochester is making this decision and they have a committee to look at this, why is it that we're going to sell it for a dollar to them? When we're paying $30,000 to keep the school running or something like that with insurance and oil and everything, why can't we, um, why can't we benefit? Why can't we say, look, if they're going to keep this open for year after year, why can't we up the price from a dollar to 30000 And if they don't want it for 30000 find a, a buyer. I find that this is a burden on Stockbridge, and I think, um, I know you guys do a great job, but we can't keep this up year after year. We make it do in Stockbridge with the art in the cafeteria and no gym, 
they can certainly find the room if they want to get that school open. But I think we need to make it a deadline. Thank you. Well, I, I have to tell you, I'm going to be, I'm going to vote no for any budget until so I see a concrete plan from the board on how they're going to engage in this process. Because otherwise, Keith, you're breaking up. Yeah, yeah we sorry. can't hear you. These Google calls and never work out that well. Um, I'm going to vote no on this budget, and I'm going to continue to vote no on the budget until I see a concrete plan from the board on how they're going to move this process forward. Because it just can't continue where we kick the can down the road and we have another committee and another committee and another committee. Maybe we should have had these committees prior to the consolidation because I haven't seen consolidation. And I'm going to try to rally any troops I can to vote no on this budget because it's just here, here. Okay. Thank you for your opinion, Keith, and thank you for your opinion, Kim. Um, we are. Uh, does anyone else uh, have a have a public comment before we move on? We're probably now at the twenty minute limit. If someone else that, uh, has, that has not yet chimed in would like to do to now's the now's time. This is Charity Colton. I'm sorry, Rob. Go ahead. Rob then Charity. Yeah, I, I want to make a couple of points. I'm from Rochester, and uh, I have complete sympathy for the folks in Stockbridge wanting to pay for all this stuff. Um, not wanting to pay for this stuff. I understand it. But, uh, Carl, I think you're not being entirely honest with everybody and talking about what happened to that abortive meeting, series of meetings we had to try to solve this problem, which, as far as I know, just died like a dog. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think you're being honest with the folks in Stockbridge about what happened, nor did I ever hear any follow-up or closure on that uh, meeting. So that's one. The second is that if I lived in Stockbridge and I wanted – uh, to get rid of the cost of this high school, I would do everything I could to encourage Rochester to buy the thing. Uh, instead of complaining about Rochester all the time, I would look at that as the shortest and simplest way to get out from under the cost of that high school. And I don't blame you guys at all. I think uh, I think you're right. I'm signing off. Okay, thank you, Rob. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the building committee. Something. I can I can do this. Okay, um, I think you're bleeding in. Um, the building committee, the building committee uh, meetings, uh, we had intended, if you recall, to have one more because we we're still trying to reconcile those drafts. We talked about that at our uh, March uh, regular board meeting in, in Rochester. Um, then, then everything got locked down mid-March and that meeting uh, got, got put aside. Um, and I would like us to go back to having those meetings. I would like us to figure out what we're doing with our budget. Um, and then I would like us to figure out what we're doing with our building. Um, I don't feel like, you know, we did not have uh, uh, materials. The, the materials in your draft, Lindy's draft, and my draft were at the most meeting with and were distributed to the board. Um, the board hasn't uh, uh, voted to, to, to accept one. As a matter of fact, the committee doesn't feel it's submitted a final report. That seemed to be be where where we landed, and then it's been it's it, it quite frankly has been uh, uh, at the wayside. But I, I don't believe that uh, there there was deception involved. Um, go ahead. Uh, I think it was Rob and Charity. Was Charity was going to be the last uh, public comment before we go into the uh, budget? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is Charity Colton. I have a suggestion. Um, based on that, every time I've been participating in a meeting, whether it be in present or over the phone, there's always a constant co conversation of transparency. And I've mentioned this before, but I think given the time that we're in right now, it would be extremely beneficial to both the board members and the public. Um, I'd like to request that if you guys could please create a template for your budget document that color codes or delineate items that are set uh, formulas that are set by the state, the federal government, another entity, including those SU assessments, color code those in a way so that they are differentiated from the items that are what I would Steph call active budgeting items. Stephanie, and in addition Stephanie. to that, if, so every budget works a little bit differently, but this budget per se, you have your primary account number and you also have your sub-account numbers within those primary account brackets. 
if you were to create a legend that has both that color coding explained and also examples of different expenses that go into those individual line items, it would help prevent some of the duplication of questions that you guys get because one person doesn't quite understand that the way they're phrasing it is the same as someone that asked the question five minutes earlier. It would also present a much more transparent budget. And if you were to create that template and use it as your living document, it's going to be hugely beneficial to you because it's going to maintain historical information. For instance, between 19, the 2019 budget, 20 and 21, there, it looks like there are some line items, some budget lines that they were done one way in 2019 and then in 20 they started to change and now in 21, those expenses have been completely moved over to a different line item, a different sub account. Those, those examples, you could literally put the historical information of how and why that moved with one single sentence and it makes it, it's just a higher level of transparency because for instance, if I as a taxpayer were asked to vote on this budget right in front of me, I would have to say no for the simple reason that it just does not provide enough detailed information with the account and sub account descriptions for me to feel like I understand what's in each one of those line items. Not because I want something one way or the other, it's simply because I don't feel there's enough information on these pieces of paper in front of me to make an educated decision. That's my request, that's it. Stephanie, okay. um, this is Ethan. Let me just take a moment to address that. Um, uh, we heard this very clearly uh, from both Stockbridge and Rochester voters last year after our annual meeting that we needed more clarity in our um, annual report. And I, I have been working as much time as I can put on it to put a lot more information in um, because I too looked at these pages of numbers and realized I, I didn't make sense of them. Um, including some explanation of uh, special education, which is incredibly complicated, um, yeah. and budgeting for that. Also, the the w w being very clear and, and your color coding idea, we're we're going to do that. What's being what will actually be voted on? What we're voting on at the annual meeting, or for that um, for that on our budget, will be separated from what has already been voted on for the SU and the and the um, special ed budget, which was voted on in January by the full board of the uh, White River Valley Supervisory Union. Um, so we are we are working on that. I, I, it's not gonna be, you know, we're not gonna have it all right, but I certainly would welcome all of your input when you do see the bulletin. If there's anything you need to have explained more, I wanna keep making it a living document that gets better and better every year so that it is clearer because I, I hear you, I really do hear you, and we've been working on it. Okay, and is that, gonna be mailed, is that gonna be mailed to all the residences or are we gonna have to find that somewhere? It'll be, uh, it'll be mailed. It will be mailed. Uh, uh, in the past. It has to be 10 days before any kind of vote. Okay. I'm working on it. So I guess that's why I have a question about it is if you were to create it as your living document template, and that's the document that you work from at all times. Sorry, this is Charity again. Um, yeah. If that was your working template, then at any point in time, if someone were to ask you a question, and for instance, I've got a copy of a proposed budget in front of me, but that would come with all of that color coding because your template, that living original document has all of that already built into it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've actually not just I, the booklet that gets mailed out no, I, for voting. I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I agree. I think it's we're a little behind in this idea of making things online, where it's much easier to have a flow of information attached to budgets. Um, it is also, and this is just literally what I've learned in terms of trying to put Excel budget documents into pages and finding ways to put information around there. It makes it a little tricky. Um, but because, um, you know, Tara's giving us the budget, they're working on the hard numbers, they understand it all. So I am trying to translate that, but I hear you that it should be an ongoing process that every time a budget's out, it should have that explanation. That's a very good I, suggestion. 
I'm wondering though, if charity is referring to this document to being a living document for the entire year as we go forward and not just at the at budget season, the one piece that's in the booklet. And I don't believe we can create this as a document that is updated throughout the year each time there is um, an expense report because that is mandated by the, the state, the chart of, of accounts, and that is the accounting system that our um, that Tara uses, that our SU uses. Um, so I think we have to take the information from her and import it into this document that provides us with more information. And I do believe that that is going to be at, a, at the annual meeting. Okay. If there are no more questions, yeah, for a time. All right. We are going to move on now. The next thing uh, on the budget is uh, uh, the discussion items of the budget. And no, you had board, uh, Carl, board comment. You had two items oh, you want to bring up. Okay, you're right. <laughs> um, I had forgotten. Uh, I had two things I wanted to point out. Um, number one, um, I wanted to, 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 to talk to uh, our administration around. So as I understand it, Vermont has gotten the USDA waiver to uh, 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 continue the to, to continue the summer the summer food program so that that uh, we will get we will get compensated for running for running summer meals in Vermont um, so I wanted to uh, hopefully our uh, um, you know I, I'd like to know are we planning to do you know knowing that we we're going to get the, uh, the 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 federal support for that I'm assuming we're going to keep the program going is that still in the works or, or thought about Bonnie and, and Lindy that's the goal. Um, there's more. Com we started a conversation around that today as an admin team, and we're supposed to follow up again on Friday. We have to circle back and find out to make sure we have workers and things like that. Okay. One of the, one of the conflicts, uh, Carl, is that a number of folks um, who work in the food service program during the year have other positions in the summer that some have had for a number of years. Um, so the question would be, as Lindy said, um, can we, would there be adequate staffing? So we and, certainly and hope there would be. And are you talking about this as a um, summer food program similar to the, the program that is currently being running or, or addressing more kids than just summer camp kids? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I should also add to all of you that there is some concern as to whether or not we're going to have a summer program at all. Um, the Southwest, Southwest Vermont school districts have canceled it and they've written a position paper around uh, the fact that they don't believe it's safe enough to have a program yet. Um, Barry has canceled theirs for the summer. Uh, Central Vermont, which is Williamstown and Northfield are looking into it. And there's gonna be a discussion with the Winooski Valley folks and that'll include me or Jamie about uh, the status, and it's not really my deal because it'll be after Jamie takes over. Uh, but there is some concern as to whether or not it's uh, we're going to have even a summer one planet program at all for the summer. Bruce, this is Jamie. Would there be um, is there any chance of the academics, the instruction being mm -hmm. continued during the summer, especially for spec ed? We would have to come up with something ourselves. There would be an, um, the alternative is to keep going the way we are, which is doing uh, the uh, virtual uh, work all summer. Um, that doesn't handle really all the needs we have, but this is a discussion that's happened around safety. It's not around the need um, at all. Um, and that's, that's a movement that just started a week and a half ago. Um, the Southwest Vermont folks came up with their position on the 15th of May. Uh, now other regions are considering it. And I know that uh, some of the folks um, over in Bonnie's neck of the woods are, are looking at it. Uh, Jeannie Collins and David Younts, who are uh, superintendents over on that side, um, <clears throat> are talking about it and we're quite frankly talking about it as a whole state now um i can imagine this is going to create quite a 
quite a pickle for all the parents who are being called to return to work as the they're trying to open reopen the economy, but they are have now have no place for their kids. I hear you. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I was just kind of bringing the message uh, today with the administrators, uh, and they heard it for the first time today too. Um, I am concerned about the summer meals and us having a labor force uh, to be able to carry it off, not just in Rochester and Stockbridge, but all over the SU. Um, many of these people are very, very tired because they haven't stopped at all. So <clears throat> that's just news. I'm, I'm, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't have any solution. How many meals, how many meals come out of Rochester Stockbridge a, a day? Or how many meals do we do a week? Uh, you saw those numbers today, Lindy and Bonnie, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it's, on the it's 50 meals, uh, 50 lunches. Breakfast is a little bit lower, but 50 lunches uh, per a day. And we're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, which means really they're putting double that out in lunches a day plus uh, whatever breakfasts are. I don't remember what those are off the top of my head. In Rochester's numbers, Carl's go between 65, 68 sometimes 70 back to 65. So I'd say mid mid 60s every day, same as Lindy's saying, breakfast and lunch. And so then we up because we deliver every other day. So our district has 110. Yeah, approximately. And it's that growing. Number, that it number grows every week. Per day. Per day. We've, uh, we've served a whole lot of you. Uh, population? How much the percentage of our population that we're feeding? If we're sending out 110 meals a day and we've got how many kids? Well, it's open to zero to 18. Right. We've also got some kids, Carl, that come from other schools who, who are eligible to come and get lunch. They're not a lot, but there's a few of them. Like kids who go to Middlebury, that's just too far to go to get a lunch. Um, so we can't really do a percentage for you. Just we're feeding a lot of kids. And our fear is if we don't find a way to continue this, you know, there's a lot of kids that might not have uh, have you know right. what you're getting now so i i mean they can you know i my general feeling is that if we've got that sort of if we're filling that sort of need and we have the opportunity to continue getting the federal funding to fill it over the summer we need to still be feeding these people if we can yeah. you're not going to get argument from bonnie and i on it it's just about staffing <laughs> to, is it possible is it possible to hire um, higher staff just for the summer? Well, that's an idea we put on the table today, Ethan, because I certainly understand, like Bruce said, the people that have been doing this, they've been doing it right out straight. And one of the reasons they haven't asked for volunteers is they felt safer just knowing the same group of people came in every day, you know, to work on lunches. So I understand that they're tired. And the I mean, we didn't have time to respond today, but we did bring up the idea of uh, could we hire and train other people uh, to do the summer lunches, we've uh, we put out uh, SU wide twenty one thousand meals since we started this on the eighteenth of uh, March. Um, so it's and we've paid seventy one thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars up until the end of April was the count. Um, we don't have the May totals yet because May's not over, but. Uh, we put out <laughs> an awful lot of food uh, to families um, over that amount of time. Um, but these people served right on through vacation and everything else. So, <clears throat> and they do have other jobs they go to, so. Okay. Um, yes, well, I think, it, it, you know, hiring uh, if, if necessary, um, understanding how, uh, to make sure that uh, as soon as the, 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 the policies uh, for, for COVID-19 reimbursement, CARES Act money reimbursement for, for these COVID-related expenses are there and we, we get that, you know, we, we, we properly file that, 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 that paperwork and we get that funding uh, uh, reimbursed, I think is, is, is important as well. And I'm sure Tara's on that. Um, the second thing I wanted to point out, and this is uh, something that if, I, I don't know how we're, we're communicating to our families, but um, from the the, the VSBA uh, uh, sent an in, uh, the, sent information from the, the the secretary that included the uh, farmers to family food box distribution 
program that's been put together with the Vermont Food Bank. Um, if we can let you know the 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 two the two dis, uh, disbursements near us are Middlebury on Wednesday and Thetford Academy on Thursday, ten to two at both at, at both places. If we could let our our, our families know, um, you know, it's it's the the, the National Guard with non -per big boxes of non perishable along with produce and chicken and, and dairy. So I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, I saw the Barry, and it's it gets. No, we're just a, we're just a tad ahead of you. We we sent that out to folks already. As soon as we saw it, we sent that out. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Yeah. And Lindy, what about the veggie Van Gogh? I know you and Bonnie were. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring that up in in June. Um, Gifford has reached out to us. They would be the applying entity. Um, they would basically just like to use uh, um, our parking lot and Stockbridge's parking lot to make fresh uh, produce available on a drive-in basis. So uh, you'll hear more about that in June, but they are very, very interested in partnering with us um, and getting those resources to our families. Excellent. That's awesome. Is there any other board comment? Okay. Carl, just one other, Carl, just one other quick thing. Um, Lindy and I, um, we sit on this group that's made up of representatives from Stockbridge, Rochester, Hancock, Granville, and Pittsfield's joined us around um, uh, food availability. So one of the things that Lindy and I felt was very important is that we had our thumb on what was available for our families as, as we head into this. So um, we're really happy to, to get any ideas that anybody hears about, but we thought it was important that we sit on that group so we could stay on top of it uh, ASAP. Thank you so much for doing that, you guys. That is that is, that is awesome because, you know, the the everything I've seen, you know, that we, you know, the the, the more we can support social emotional well being, the more we can support, uh, uh, you know, food security and and uh, um, you know wellness activities outside, you know, and 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 the more we can support the whole child and not just the stuff we can cram at them through a Google Hangout or, 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 or through a screen, I think right. the better. Um, Bonnie and Lindy, that group, because I've sat in on it as well, that group meets Monday at nine o'clock, am I correct? Yes, and, and I was tasked today with asking you if um, you'd like to find someone else from Stockbridge to join. I told them I thought you were tutoring. I would love to. I would love to. I've okay. asked to select people, so. Maybe I think there are some of them on, so maybe they would. Yeah, I, I've asked. I would love that. Okay. Well, just let me know if someone volunteers. Okay. Okay. Um, we are now moving into a 5.1, uh, a discussion of the budget. Um, you all should have gotten uh, the most recent uh, revision uh, was from uh, Tara uh, at uh, 230, uh, 233 to be exact, uh, this afternoon. Um, you also got earlier from Tara uh, some comments on expenditures and uh, up-to-date expenditures. And I wanted to uh, 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 briefly touch on that because I think some of those questions will inform um, where we are uh, 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 budgetarily. When, when I look at you know some of some of the areas in our uh, in that full, uh, end of April expenditure report that are uh, uh, kind of out of whack with with where our 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 budget was last year, and, and I want to make sure that we're adjusting for it in this budget going forward. So the spreadsheet that that she sent out, the the couple questions I had around that were around um, first of all our our food service the. Uh, um, when I look at the, the by program tab of that, um, it shows, you know, us bringing in the $56,000, um, uh, this year that we budgeted. Oh, can you say line number, please? Um, I'm looking at the, uh, um, the RSUD expenditures as of 430, 2020. The, uh, the, uh, there was uh, two documents that she attached to that. One was a spreadsheet. Oh, and that spreadsheet has a tab that's called by program. And when you scroll down to, to uh, row 239, it's, uh, it's uh, program 150 food service. It's, it? 
So this is I not in the budget. This is not in the budget. Right. This is else. this is this is us. This is me looking at our our current expenditures oh, and okay. looking at big big areas that are 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 seem to be very out of whack with where our proposed budget is. How did did you download that Excel sheet or or anything? Because when I'm looking at it through the Google Doc through that through that um um link there there's only data in the raw data and the cleaned um areas yeah, do I, I, need I, took to that, I took that spreadsheet and i opened it in uh and i just opened it in google sheets okay thank you. You have to make sure you enable the macros amy or none of the formulas and macros are going to carry over to the other tabs okay thank you i had no idea i was like why is she sending me a sheet that's half empty <laughs> <laughs> So the you should have emailed me. I would have told you that. I I just was like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> the question that I have is that we 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 show the fund transfer, the balance, uh, the, the the budget transfer, the fifty six grand that we budgeted for, but we show that so far this year we've spent um, like one hundred and seventeen, and we're budgeting fifty six again going forward. Is that, am I, am I missing the, the do, do, do we have a, a revenue item that I'm missing? The revenue that you get for food service, Carl, is your state and federal reimbursement and then what your students pay for the ones that don't get free and reduced meals. Um, and as far as what's in the budget, that is just the general fund transfer that's showing up there. Okay that you as a board move from your general fund to your food service fund. Right, right. I just wanted to make sure that when I look at when I look at the expenditure side and I see that we've, we've spent all, all, all that money, I wanted to make sure that there was federal reimbursement that was backfilling that $66,000 um, deficit that our expenditure sheet shows. And that we're not just saying, okay, well, we'll write in $56,000 knowing that we're just going to have, we'll just run a, 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 you know, we'll, we'll just run a giant deficit. I can ask for a deeper dive into where your food service budget stands currently. It's not something I've looked in, in great detail. Okay. Um, we also, um, when you look at the school-wide programs, we had budgeted um, $83,000 and we're, 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 we're closer to a uh, hundred in the long, in the, in the, the title one, the 440. Same spreadsheet, row 257, or that, that collection of, of information. Do we budget appropriately for, for Title I going forward? We have dropped your grant revenue substantially, as you saw in my email that I sent out this afternoon. Okay. So does, does that mean we're just going to, we'll, we'll just have less services, or are we going to need to, 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 to put more money in? And then lastly, um, when I look at our expenditures um, in uh, row 230 for our, our secondary uh, tuition, private and, and LEAs, we seem to be, we, we seem to have expended like 300,000 more than we had budgeted. And I thought we had a pretty firm handle on, on where, where our kids were going in last year's budget. And do we hope if we did not, do we have a better handle in this year's budget? Your budget this year, I can't speak too much as to what happened last year, but the budget this year was based on where student enrollment is and projected where students were going to go for tuition. Okay. Okay, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just used to that number being a lot. Carl, more. where were you looking at that number from? Because I'm not seeing yeah, it. I was just that. trying to find it too. Can you uh, I'm in the FUD expenditure. Are you in the budget or are you still in that expenditure? I'm still in the expenditure sheet. Okay, which, I'm with you. Which, which tab? tab? I'm which on the tab? by program tab. Okay. Okay. It groups everything neatly by program. Yeah, no, I'm looking there. What? Which line then? I'm, I'm down at uh, row... Uh, uh, 229 and row 230 or 231. That. That's why I'm struggling. 229. I don't see a 229. Carl, are you in, are you in the, whoops. Are you in the expenditure for this year or last year, Carl? 
I'm in the I'm in the spreadsheet that says RSUD expenditures as of 430 2020. So this yeah. year. Okay. So where is that number? I don't see it. Tara, what line? Because 229 is TAN interest and 230 is HRA administrative services. Mm, in my in my or did you expand all the other upper ones? I expanded, I expanded okay, that's where, fine. where I get to see tuition. Okay. So and you I, need I look to expand at the, the we're, we're, on, your, we're, on your Excel file, expand next to where the little plus sign is, and then it will break them down further. Uh, that's why we can't the, see what he's saying. Uh, I couldn't hear that word. Yeah, I've been here going. What, you what? have to hit the little plus. Yep. And you might and have to the object code. And you might have to says, like for an example, 140 pre-K regular ed. There's a little plus sign right before that. If you hit that, then that will expand on that roll up. And I if it doesn't lost. let you do it, you might have to hit refresh. I just yep. lost everything. Right click <laughs> refresh. Okay, so now what number are we on? Um, I was looking at uh, the uh, row 230 tuition dash secondary private and row 231 tuition dash secondary VTLEAs. Mm -hmm. the 231 row that normally in past years, the, the amount we've budgeted has been maybe a kid or two off, but not, not, not that many off. And I wanted to make sure that if, you know, that, that, that we're, we're, we're closer in being accurate in what we're putting into this, this budget going forward. Carl, what did you say you're reading? It's deficit what? Three hundred thousand? Yes, three hundred and eight thousand four hundred and eighty four dollars and sixty three cents. Okay, so something has to be wrong there. We we I think that that's where it may be the prior year tuition expenditure. That's gonna show up there too. Because it was paid in this fiscal year as a prior year expense. So that's part of it. But then if you look well, down that's below. 80, that's that's 87,000 of it. Oh, I'm sure that's probably coded in the other column. I have to go back and pull the expenditure report, the detail on it to see. Okay. Um, I, my my yeah, biggest. do a deeper dive on the tuition. Okay. Carl, um, you're you're accurate. Last year, when we when we created came to that not created when we arrived at that tuition number, we did it student by student, just like we did it this year. We did actual counts of kids and where they are going. The only guesstimates we made were on the sixth graders, uh, because they can always change their minds, you know, in July in terms of what school they're going to. But, right. Well, so you had said at the last meeting we had a pretty good idea where they're all going, except for maybe one. So we're we're Correct. Hopefully dialed in. Correct. Correct. So that number, Claire's going to have to take that number apart for us, but I'm very confident that number is not. Yeah, I, I don't need to have a, a, a giant explanation tonight. I just wanted to make sure when I was looking at that, I was like, these things seem out of whack with right. what we budgeted, and it looks like it's close to what we budgeted for this coming year forward. I wanted to make sure that, that we, that, that, that you know, what we, 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 were being, we were being as accurate and as dialed in as we can be this year. Going right. forward. We, we did it the same way this year, youngster by youngster. Excellent. Thank you. So then, uh, Tara, uh, I don't know if you have anything more to say about, about uh, or the expenditures. I'm done talking about that. I don't know if anyone else wants to talk about expenditures. I know Jenny had some questions. Yeah, I had a few questions, not on the expenditures, but on the budget. Are we moving on to the budget part of her spreadsheet? Yeah. Um, so Wendy actually answered some of my questions. Um, the first one was about the um, start salary decreasing. I don't know, Lindy, if you wanted to talk about that now or later. It's part of executive session, Jenny. Okay. Um, and then the PE salary decreasing, Wendy explained that that was... Um, last year, some of the Rochester was billed to contracted services. So this year, um, I'm not sure if Charity's on the phone, but one of those things that was billed differently last year, and I think it's 
it's not an SU thing. I think um, it's more, correct me if I'm wrong, Tara, but more of a, a state issue and a past um, business manager, you know, things coding in differently than what needs to get coded in this year. Um, so I answered that question. Um, let's see. Uh, I was wondering, and I wasn't at the last meeting, I apologize if we already discussed this, but um, had a question if we're carrying over all of our surplus surplus into this coming budget. Gary, I think you're muted. I'm not sure if you're talking or not. It is not the full surplus. There's about $29,000 roughly left out of the FY19 projected surplus. And that was based on the conversation that we had in the last board meeting, just moving things around and how we wanted to do that. So that was why this budget draft represented that increase in the surplus usage. And then your decision what you want to do. So. On well kind of where it really gets into the main numbers um i just looked at this really briefly today so i didn't really think about it much but the um the education spending per pupil per pupil cost was 18863.85 and then i was thinking last year but i could be wrong um it has the adjusted per, per pupil spending for calculation um do we it looks like we don't um, reduce it by the less exclusions number. Is that correct? You still have to disclose what your education spending per pupil cost actually is. And if you have exclusions, those are then deducted, which helps off so you don't get the tax penalty. Okay. So the reason we're not over the threshold is because if you were to reduce that 18863 by 494, then you'd be below that number. Is that right, then? Correct. Okay. Um, I and maybe that, just for the, can I just comment on that? Maybe just for the uh, public that's listening, Sarah can explain why we get to reduce um, that we have those deductions. That's to do with the teachers' retirement fund that the state's not going to penalize us on rebuilding that fund, so we get credit for it for that expenditure. As a part of like that, that. Um, you can use your bond payments that you pay as an offsetting exclusion. And then um, any we can the sped excess offset that we get as a supervisory union, I can apportionate a portion of that to each of the member yeah, districts, which helps. Okay, thank you. Those are my main um, questions. Since there's so many people on the phone, I'm not sure if it would be worth doing like a a brief summary of any major changes from last year. We put some of those, I'm sorry, Jenny, was that you? I can't tell who it was. Yes, that was Jenny. Okay, Jenny, we, we put some of those on the cover sheet with the budget. Now, a couple changes have happened since then, which one of which we're gonna talk about in executive session, but we can, um, we can certainly highlight whatever anyone thinks, uh, you know, is missing. But that's what we tried to do in that cover sheet we sent out with the budget. That was not sent with this draft, though. Is that correct? No, that was with the the first draft, uh, the first one that Tara sent out. Not the first draft, but the first uh, most the expenditure cut that was sent in this one is the one of the executive session discussions. Right, right. right. No, but I'm t the the um, expenditure, the changes that she's talking about is um, that was sent to us um, at your last meeting. At, at the, the last meeting. meeting. Right for the last meeting. Okay. Right. So that ma those management management notes don't change or, or 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 don't need to be revised. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's probably good that we ha we have those with every with this budget draft though to be able to see what those what are that is. It's probably a good idea that Lindy and I uh, redo that after executive session tonight so that we can show everything that's changed from last year to this year. 
I think that would be very helpful. Uh, I I do before we go further. I mean, there there definitely is a, a discussion about that surplus that uh, we need to have, and um, I don't know if now's the the time to discuss it or not. But we need to kind of get our heads around what it is and and what where we're going with it and how it um, affects our budget. Yeah, that's a the, 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 that's an important uh, piece of the discussion. I wanted to. Does anyone have any? general questions about about the budget itself before we we start talking about um reserve funds and and, and surpluses and things this budget does represent um it's set, it's like seventeen thousand dollars less than last year is what i'm showing for expenditures is that correct Are yeah. We yeah. yes yeah it's, it's, it's seventeen thousand dollars less in, in uh expenditures Forty-one thousand dollars left in, less in revenues. Yeah. Okay. So that has caused, though we were spending less, it still causes the um, tax rate to go up. Right. The tax rate is going to go up uh, four cents in Rochester and three point three cents in uh, Stockbridge. To remember that two cents of that is the loss of the uh, 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 merger incentive money. The merger incentive money uh, goes down. Right. And the uh, percentage of, of, of uh, oh, contracted salary increases and uh, health insurance is like 12%. Isn't, is that correct? But then we had a lot of increases that we needed to incur in this budget. So we've actually probably done quite well to, to keep There's it There's a projected 3% increase in salaries and the health insurance is 12 point, a projected increase of 127 you haven't settled on negotiations yet, so that 3% is merely a placeholder? Okay. Which I think is quite commendable that we were only only went up, um, what did you say, like 2% or something? But when we um, had fixed, you know, this, this um, larger percentage of insurance and possible salary. Indeed. Another significant increase in there was funding the... Uh, uh, the HRA is at 65%. Right. Um, so Tara, as far as, as, as far as the surplus goes, I want to make sure that, that, uh, we're, we, we, we all understand what's going on. We made in, in, in fiscal 19, while we set up three, um, three restricted funds that the taxpayers approved, a Stockbridge fund, a Rochester fund, and a secondary tuition fund. The only fund of those that has funds in it is the Stockbridge fund, and that's like around 117 or something. I show in the FY19 audit a capital reserve fund that has $109,572 in it. Okay, so because I, I don't have that, obviously I don't have that audit. I have the FY18 audit, which is that $117,000 that I showed. So we, we spent six, we spent down 6,000 bucks of it on something or other around Stockbridge. That was building, building related. I would have to go back and check, Carl. All I have is just the ending balance on my notes. Okay. And because, Is there a promise that got put in around that time or something? Was that? Uh, was there possibly a furnace or, or something expended? Yeah, the, furnace was, the furnace was before that. The furnace okay. was, before. was it this? Was it the soundproofing, Lindy, in the gym? No. Okay. Um, but uh, again, I didn't even know this fund existed until like four months ago. So I have no clue what could have been taken out of that. Yeah. Um, no, we've, it's, uh, it paid for roof and furnace. Uh, we, we Stockbridge put away, um, um, surpluses, uh, no, it makes complete sense. I just don't know what would have been pulled out of it. Okay. Um, but, and, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, Tara, the, the, the mistake that was made was that while the, the, the funds were made, we never, we never took and, and formally told the taxpayers put this much money from from the, the 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 disposal of dandelion daycare or from whatever into that particular fund is that accurate, Tara? 
Correct. So the sale proceeds from the Dandelion Daycare Building have lived in your general fund since the proceeds were paid out in July of 2018. Okay. Right. So that money has been part of your general fund surplus for the last two years. But it's never been spent down or spending down the general fund surplus. Part of your general fund surplus. Right. But so I guess what I'm confused about is legally we're supposed to either let the taxpayers to tell us put that money away or we have to return it to them correct and you would have used part of your general fund surplus that that money is included in when you did your budget last year and you used your prior year surplus to offset your tax revenue right so i, I the guess the same thing you're doing again this year it's sitting in your general fund it is part of the general fund surplus. Okay, so what what you're saying is is that the 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 actual funds were expended um, in FY19, and then we 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 can say okay, well we had another surplus in or we they were expended in it was sold in in FY19, so they're expended in 19, and then we could still say some of this year's surplus could be that because technically, I mean, my my concern here is I want to make sure that. We're not, we're, we, we didn't violate the laws by not returning all the money we should have returned. We did return it. We can just call part of this year's surplus that same funds and put it away. Right, because it's part of your general fund surplus. It is not separate money. So right. when you're using your general fund surplus to offset tax revenue, the proceeds were part of that surplus. No, you did not use your entire surplus to offset your tax revenue nor have you done so in this budget cycle at this point. Okay. And this budget that you sent out this morning, that $142,000 um, is the, um, is, you know, it, it includes all the, with, that's us giving back everything we, we that, that's us not having the ability to allocate any money to um, a, a reserve fund. If we were going to if we were going to warn in this in this you know in this uh, 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 annual meeting that we were going to put money away into any reserve fund, we would have it to twenty nine thousand of a projected surplus. Say that again. Right now, right now, the projected surplus after we paid the. FY18 tuition invoice that just came in was $171,987,000. Right. And we're, we, we're we, going to originally leave 71000 out of the surplus, which was roughly what your dandelion proceeds were, so that you could then ask your voters if you could move that money this fiscal year. But then last week when we met, or two weeks ago when we met, we discussed the need for upgraded computer equipment. And depending on when that equipment is purchased, depended on what funds you were going to use to pay that. So if you pay for that in FY20's budget, it would come out of FY20's expenditure budget. If you were to purchase these after town meeting, after you had an approved budget, and after your voters said, yes, you can create this special reserve fund, yes, you can put this amount of money in it, you could then use those reserve funds to pay for those computers that we talked about before. So this is where you as a board need to make the decision as to how you want to move forward. You authorize the purchase of the computers. Correct. Because that is an absolute necessity at this point in time to continue distance learning. Correct. And that is what that $29,000 difference is. Correct. And so that's where we came up with the 142,987 because we took the 29 grand out of the 171. Exactly. Um, and we also think, and we, had, we still don't have more guidance on this, but we're also pretty confident that because this is a COVID-related uh, uh, purchase, their computers were fine when they were uh, used for classroom instruction. They fail when they're taken out and and, and used for these these uh, group Google Meets and so on and so forth. Um, where you, you gave us guidance that you were pretty confident, and you couldn't obviously guarantee it because we don't have the 
the rules yet, but you were pretty confident that this would this would fall squarely in the, you know, getting all the the getting all the AT and T hotspots and and getting the equipment that we needed COVID related. This would definitely be included in my submission as a COVID expenditure. Now, the last guidance I heard, and I you know I think it was Friday when we heard it, is that the COVID funds are probably not going to be released until after July first. So unless something changes in the state, that's where we're at right now. That is correct. Right. We would still, I mean, you would then have to, you know, it would make things uh, more complicated accounting wise for you, correct? Because we would get the reimbursement. We'd have to, you know, credit it as a prior year and, and, and do right. a couple of more yeah, accounting. It's a business manager's nightmare for every business manager in the state of Vermont. <laughs> So okay, so but it, so again, your guidance is that the, the the cleanest and most conservative way to deal with getting these computers is to uh, is, is to, to to knock down our surplus that we're bringing forward. So we're only bringing forward the one forty two, buy the computers now, and then when we get the reimbursement, um, we can use it as a surplus going forward. Um, but we're not we're not buying the equipment to put us into a deficit position now. Is Correct. That Okay. Right. You have funds available based on this year's budget projections for FY20. It does look like you are trending towards a surplus again this year. If everything goes as I, you know, as we had projected, but we all know how that's been working lately. Um, things change on a day-to-day -day basis with the state. So yes, as of the last report that we ran, you were continuing to trend in a, in a surplus. So you could purchase the computers now. We would include it in our COVID extra expenditure claim to the state to get reimbursement out of some of that CARES money that's coming back to us. Excellent. Thank you for, for clarifying, clarifying that. Does anyone else have any other questions around reserve funds and um, revenues and, and uh, things going forward? Tara? In, pre in a previous meeting, I uh, we I believe, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, that you had put forward a surplus that was not the total amount of our surplus because of the con excuse me concern of um, lingering uh, expenditures after the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Yes, Amy, I always err on the side of caution of not using your full surpluses because you do not know what could come up, just like we didn't know that huge tuition bill was going to come up. That is a risk that you as a board take if you use your surplus. And this is, you know, one of the things that the auditors talked about, as I had said before, to all of us business managers when we went to our annual meeting in December was that that is the issue with the statute allowing you to use surplus funds basically two years and not right. really knowing if they're accurate or not because the very first step in every fiscal audit is to reevaluate your prior year accounts receivable and your prior year accounts pay payable, which offsets what a projected surplus could have been. So yes, I always would continue to caution you not to use a full surplus just in case. So in this scenario, though, are we using our full surplus? There is $29,000 left. Okay, left, thank you. Um, so, uh, and that basically we we have taken the proceeds from the dandelion set, $71,000 um, from, from the sale of dandelion is basically being infused into this budget um, to be able to get to where we are today. The proceeds Correct. for Jenny Lyon daycare are in your general fund. You are using right. a general fund surplus to offset your tax rates and tax revenue. Right. So it, it, we are using that money to offset our taxes. We, we are funding the budget. Well, that sucks. <laughs> uh, it was definitely not the original intention, but it is what it is. Well, certainly, if the you know if the board, I mean, the board if the board wants to, you know, I, I certainly agree with you, Amy, in the sense that 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 money was, uh, I mean, 
Well, 71,000 was the gross. I think 55 was the net. No, 71 is what it was sold for. Yeah. There were no realtors costs. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I remembered her saying something about a $55,000 uh, number. Tara did in one of her letters, but, um, you know, whatever that number can be, you know, the, the it's, you know, the, the using it uh, or, 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 or putting it aside is the will of the board. You know, or well, it's the, actually, it's the it's not my decision what you do. It is you as a board what you decide to use. Yeah. I simply put the numbers in the spreadsheet for you based on the request that was made. Well, you know, the the Rochester board had, under all guidance that they were given at the time, set up a fund and had created a reserve fund. Um, you know, I, I'm not at you know, should we be asking Stockbridge to take a portion of their building fund to put into this budget to help offset it to, so it's a little bit more 40, 60 put in? I don't, not, not necessarily saying that's the right answer. Um, yeah, well, the, I, it, it's important to note that you cannot take, uh, uh, that, that money has been set aside for the Stockbridge building. Um, it's right. In, and, it's in, it's and, in there, but we can't take it to, we can't take it to do, if there was some sort of improvement that was being done at Stockbridge that was being paid for out of general funds, you could you could replace that with funds from the building fund. But I don't believe there, you, you can't just, you can't just say, okay, we're just gonna claw that back. And I, I think I'm just saying from, from the Rochester, uh, the original Rochester board point of view is that we had through all the guidance that we were given and all we had done the same, had created a building reserve fund. And, and, and we actually, the, the, the sad thing is you actually did. There, there, there is, there's, there's three official funds that are made. I know. It's from the Rochester fund and the tuition fund. Just David uh, or previous, uh, previous business managers forgot the step of once you make the fund, you got to put the funds into it. Okay. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, 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 the sad the sad place that this is in. <laughs> this is Carol. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that a comment, Ethan? So I guess the question is what guidance do you want to provide if around that, Amy, I hear what you're saying. Well, it's, it's all about, it, 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 it's about if this is, you know, if, Amy, if you think this is make or break, I mean, if this is really the will of the board that we have this money set aside, um, then we have to go back and look at this budget again um, and, and find a way to get it out um, because it's not being used as it should. I mean, this is what happens is things come up and we just grab from wherever the funds seem to be sitting around. Right. And, and um, if, if, if that's not what we want to do, Jenny and Janie, and um, then we need to make decisions about that. I, um, I appreciate all the hard work that our administrators have done to create this budget. And I trust I them fully that they have, done what they the, they need to be able to educate our kids and to for us to have successful educating kids I, it sucks it's but i'm not going i no i'm not going to say that the money should go into a reserve fund when it could be used for our kids right now no but i i i do hear you i really do hear you as i yeah and maybe that's all is i just need it to be heard i just need well, it to be well, no i i mean this is a <laughs> I have a lot of feelings right now about a lot of this, whether it's the building or the bu building funds, or, you know, the high school building or what reality we're going to be facing this fall. Um, I, I, there's a part of me that thinks all these discussions, while we have to go through this because we're going forward, are, are completely uh, unreal in some ways um uh because we, we we don't know in so many ways what we're facing in the fall in terms of revenue projections in terms of deficits to the education fundings um right. uh, so mm -hmm. i i, I, I mean, you know, a little bit of a bank account kind of well, hurt 
I, I certainly would say that it's not a bad it's not a bad idea to have have a rainy day fund right now, um, and um, so and and may I and may I address a question too that has to do with the budget that was brought up in one of our questions by our, our public comment. Um, if if this budget got voted down and it was um, cut a cut a faculty member or cut a building. Well, no, that's not a black and white question. Um, it's not like, well, of course we'd cut the staff member. Um, uh, you know, we, we need to make a decision. And if we're faced with a lot of, uh, we're going to have some tough decisions coming up. Um, so I, I found the email that Tara had sent. Tara says that the uh, DDC sale prof, uh, pro proceeds are $71,000. Um, less 17000 and change for expenditures paid, less $29,000 for the uh, replacement technology for uh, uh, RES. So that would mean, she says, you could move $24,775 um, to, to uh, a reserve fund. That's her, that's her looking at um, the uh, 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 figures around the, this is, what, this is her breakdown of the Daniel Ryan Acres figure. That, but those haven't happened yet, Carl. Remember that was these are if you use these funds for these expenditures that are currently covered through your general fund. They have not been covered yet. They are still paid out of your general fund. The Black River, the ATC. Right. Um, and we've the those funds. You you said that those funds or or the the the, the buildings the the building study the engineering study is coded in the contracted services right now as I set it up under its own project code so that we had it. So the two invoices that are in there are the Black River and the ATC. And then we offset the expenditure by $7,500 because we got that Efficiency Vermont grant. Correct. So, so right now those, post, those expenditures are just sitting in your general fund. That was based on the questions you all had asked me before. If we decided to use the Dandelion Daycare funds for those expenditures, this would be what your balance is. But that is not a completed transaction. So I just want to be clear there. Right. I and I I, I understand that. The seven but the seventeen thousand dollars, seventeen one twenty nine for expenditures paid, that is not is 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 that the, the that that's the Black River and the ATC, correct? Yes, less the seventy five hundred dollar offsetting grant. Right. So, so what? What to understand what you what you sent to me? First of all, we have we have in the budget that you've presented, you've got twenty nine thousand dollars that you've kept that, that you've kept out of the surplus. Correct. Um, you say when you break it down, if you say okay, we sold Dandelion Acres and we use those funds like we talked about to pay to pay for black to, to pay for the engineering study. And then we used more of those funds to pay for the Rochester teacher computers. We would have still remaining from the from the uh, DDC sale. You show a balance of, of, of twenty four thousand seven hundred and seventy five. That's in our general fund somewhere. Right. So you would have to drop your surplus down. Right. But we we have the twenty five the twenty eight the twenty nine thousand dollars of off budget surplus. We would be left with a five thousand um, dollar budget budget. Uh, a, a budget cushion of unapplied surplus. If we put the twenty four, if we said okay, we're going to put the twenty four seven seven seventy five into the Rochester rainy day fund. Well, that would depend. That would be what was left if you used the Dandelion daycare proceeds to cover the seventeen thousand. If we transferred that out, so you would have to get step one. You would have to get your voters to agree to allow you to create a special revenue fund. Step one. Step two, you would have to get your voters to agree to allow you to move $70,904 from the general fund surplus to this special revenue fund. Step, so that's what the voters would have to agree to. Then you as a board once a special revenue fund has been established, the only way those funds can be used is you as a board have to authorize your building administrators the ability to access those funds. So then you as a board would have to say, yes, 
we want you to pay the Black River invoice. Yes, we want you to pay the ATC invoice out of that special reserve fund. If you did that, then you would have that balance. If all of that was done prior to this purchase of $29,000 of the computers, you would have the $24,000 if you authorize the computer purchase to also come out of that special reserve fund. Okay, so but so that is what that paragraph represented was if you paid these three expenditures out of the dandelion daycare proceeds, you would have $24,775 left out of that $70,904. Correct. But riddle me this, Batman. Um, Hold on a sec. Um, Carl, just so you know, we're 10 minutes over our time. Okay. Um, the thing that if, if, the, if the dandelion, see, that would, that would, going through all those steps that you talked about, would certainly be the way it should have happened when the money got put aside first and then we, 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 we drew it down. The point is that money never got put aside first. So it's a right. general fund. So right. we, don't, we don't need to move all 70,000 to it and, and then debit it down. We can buy the computers, we can pay for the um, building studies and we can say, okay, what's left over, we're gonna move 24,775 out of the general fund into, into the existing Rochester building fund and we end up at the same place. Do we not? Right. You are absolutely right. And we could do that, leaving $5,000 of, of uh, surplus available for unexpected expenses because we or, or $4,225 because we've booked the rest of the expenditure, the, the, the rest of the surplus, um, the 143 surplus um, doesn't include that 29,000. So we use 24,775 to, 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 to make the Rochester Dandelion daycare area or, or daycare sale whole and, and kind of achieve what Rochester wanted. You know, we, we put aside some money for Rochester. We, we pay for the sale the way we talked about it. And we, um, we pay for the computers uh, a, a, as well. Wouldn't that get us to the same place? Yes. In a roundabout way. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Just so that's something we can think about. We can, we could, we could, Put as, you know, we could warn an article that says we're going to fund 24775, um, which is the remainder of the dandelion daycare sale into the Rochester building fund without without changing the tax rate in the budget you presented, correct? We just would be have a much tighter margin um, for the, the, the upcoming audit. Okay. I'm going to run my numbers, Carl. You know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. While you do that, I want to be mindful of the fact that we're over time. I wanted to talk next about what we've heard from the Secretary of State around, uh, um, around our uh, vote coming up. I'd sent, I believe I forwarded everyone the note that I got from uh, our, uh, our attorney's office. Carl, are you talking about what you sent last week? No, I'm talking about what I sent. Uh, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, I thought I forwarded this to everybody. Um, Let me send. I, I will. Uh, I will. I will. I will send it. Uh, send it out. I guess I did not send it. I was asking a question. Um, but so we have a couple things we need to do to make this to make this happen. Um, we need to. We need to have um, uh, another. You know, if we if we assumed it, it we, we we need to uh, have another vote to approve a ballot, um, which we would then be mailing to all voters. Um, with uh, with a, uh, a a return a, a, a self addressed return envelope to be sent uh, to be sent back to us. Um, Is that the method you're going to pick? Because there's two choices in the way you're going to you can do this. Well, and you might want to ask Lori um, Scott, but 
Right. Um, you can, as, as the, 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 the state was saying their, their guy or the guidance from the attorney is that, is that we should mail everyone a ballot. And we, we apparently at this point still need to have a physical voting location. And Carl, let me chime in there. Um, the select board, as as the board knows, asked to come over and look at uh, the high school to see if there was a place they could find for the August primary and then the presidential election in November. They felt that those two northern, uh, the two classrooms on the northern corner of the building, one faces the parking lot, one faces the skate space that they could easily set up uh, a voting procedure that they were comfortable with in terms of distancing and people not passing each other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when I talked with the, with the town clerk, her preference for the school board, and she was just weighing in on what she thought would be best, would be that if, it, if at all possible, we follow for the school budget, the primary and the presidential election, we follow the same procedure. So it's not confusing to voters what they're doing. So they're doing the same thing three times, whatever it is we decide. Okay. But they felt very comfortable about having adequate space in there to, to set up uh, in-person voting. At, uh, has the same assessment been made at the at Stockford Central School? Uh, Lori and I haven't talked about that aspect um, so Lori, if you're still on, feel free to speak. I mean, we could, we could make it work on the multi-purpose room, but you would have to do it on a Tuesday or a Thursday. I can't have people in there while they're doing food for families. Okay. Um, that makes sense. I, 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 I uh, certainly hear you there. We can't, <laughs> having people pass the multi-purpose room while we're making sandwiches is probably not the most. Uh, uh, best of distancing. Ray? Uh, Carl, sorry, you did have somebody on mute. I wondered if it was the person Lindy invoked there, ending in on 11. They've muted again. Ah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not sure what Lori's uh, phone number is. No, that, that was that was me. Um, I, I, I kind of agree with Julie um, on the Rochester side. Whatever we do, we have to be consistent election to election just so as not to confuse people. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know the whole setup in the school as far as the distancing and all that kind of stuff. So Lindy and I maybe need to have a conversation maybe tomorrow. Sure, we can do that. So they can, they can speak intelligently about it. <laughs> <laughs> we can use the house as well. Okay, yep. But I think you, you've really got to have that um, separate in and out so you don't have people passing each other and all that kind of thing. So just I think we just have to. OK, um, beyond that, because so uh, if you recall, in April, we passed the uh, a resolution that allowed us to, uh, uh, if the board so desires, to have a uh, Australian ballot. Um, uh, and we would obviously uh be be in, in, in invoking that piece of it what that means that's different for us is we need to uh hold a public information hearing on the ballot items it needs to be presided over by, over by the board that needs to occur within 10 days prior to the vote it has to be publicized by being warned um the way that most towns seem to be doing this the attorney says is by uh, uh zoom or or uh, webex or, or or google meets um the uh, 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 the warning and the booklet, you know, obviously need to be to to, to be mailed as well. And if we do uh, if we do do a um, a, uh, a a mail out ballot, where we the, the the current guidance from the Secretary of State is that that can be done. We can we don't have to wait for people to request a mail ballot, regardless of uh, if we decide to mail a ballot out. As I understand it, we are required to have a mail-in ballot available because that, by Vermont statute, is a requirement of, of an Australian ballot is the ability to vote by mail. So we have to have we 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 have to have a uh, uh, an ability to vote by mail, um, and we have to have places uh, polling places open. It was the, 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 the guidance that we heard from Bruce on Friday at the the the, the meeting. Bruce, is that still the case? I do. Yeah. You there? I'm sorry, I, it took a while for me to get my button. 
If we do an Australian ballot, Bruce, we, we have to have a mail option because that's Vermont statute and we have to have a polling place as well. Correct? Yeah, and, and, and some of the towns, uh, Ro uh, Chelsea and Tunbridge are doing two different polling places. They're going to do one in each town and then go mingle votes. I think it's important for people to have the ability to vote by mail because of their own personal situations of not wanting to come out into the public or, or, or not. Um, and then, yeah, for people to be able to come if, if they're able to, it, it kind of makes sense to me to be able to have both. But are you gonna... Trafford, Trafford and uh, First Branch are both doing a drive up. Uh, okay. uh, drive up. Drive up. And um, so. Uh, Granville and Hancock are, are voting by mail. So by doing um, a uh, ba uh, the ballot vote kind of vote by mail, um, well, either way, it's going to cost us quite a, quite a bit more, though, isn't it? That's to, the that's the big issue is the expense. Yeah. Well, so it, if we so had to drive up, then we wouldn't be paying for the return the mail coming back to to the school. But you have to think about this more as an absentee situation. Are you going to, if you're going to offer a polling place, then people would just call and request to have the ballot mailed to them versus mailing a ballot to every registered voter. Are you going to mail to every registered voter a ballot and let them have the opportunity to come to a polling place? Right, and then how could, that'd be a lot of verification of, do you already mail one well, in? Are you that's what happens when the vote, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what would happen when the votes are counted. Because when you fill right. out an absentee ballot, you sign off who you are. You say, you know, my name's Lindy Stetson, and you sign off on it. Right. Um, and then you also have to check in and check out when you do Australian ballot. Seems like it would be more cost efficient if we just had people request a ballot rather than sending it to the everybody in town. Because it can't be sent at the same time as our annual book. Is that correct? Correct. It has to be a separate mailing. It has to be a separate mailing. And normally, normally uh, for, for absentee ballots, they have to be requested. The Secretary of State is making an exemption, allowing them just to be, just to be, be, be sent out to all, registered, uh, to all registered voters. We also were told on Friday that extraordinary expenses of the election, if we mailed everyone a ballot, for example, that's a COVID-eligible expense. Um, yeah, but as, how much COVID money is going to be out there? <laughs> Uh, $1 million for uh, LEA, LEA COVID related expenses. Um, but, you know, Ed, I, I think what we need to think about is, is, you know, if our, if our clerks are comfortable holding, uh, holding an election, we can, we can do that. We have to have a ballot that needs to be available to be mailed to people. And so we have to have a mechanism in place, whether that's the town clerks that would be mailing that or, uh, uh, there's someone at the school. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we don't usually do, we, we, we don't ever do it. Uh, uh, Australian ballots. I'm assuming it'd be the clerk. I'm assuming that. I would too because they would need to verify right residency. Yeah. I was going to say it would, it would seem to me like it would just be a typical uh, absentee ballot that you're requesting because somebody okay. has to confirm. I mean, I can't go to Rochester or Stockbridge and request a ballot. Somebody's right. going to deal with the residency piece. Cor correct, but I mean, it's uh, it did. I'm sure there's you know towns that do Australian ballots know how to do this. We do not, so I don't know. I, I I I'm I'm loath for us to be driving you know driving the bus on how to 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 to, to conduct the ballot. I don't know, you know, well, do our do Australian ballot, so it, we should know people the somebody in the town. I know we have a new town clerk, but traditionally it's always been an Australian ballot. So the the um, our attorneys will create the ballot. Uh, okay. you tell us what they're going to what you want on it. They're doing it for the other towns as well. So that would be Bob Fletcher in uh, Fletcher or uh, Stitzel Page in Fletcher. He is the one that's working on the ballot right now for the other towns that have already approved it. Um, as far as the uh, mechanism, the working, you have to establish what you want to do, and then. Work with your town clerk to make sure that that uh, takes place. So, so it sounds like our town clerks will want uh, consistency between 
all the different elections that are happening. And it seems to me that they're doing in person in Rochester, or what are they doing in Stockbridge for the primary and the general election? Are they providing polling? I, I not understand that. you're required. Lori just unmuted herself. Hold on. Polling place. That's what Bruce said about Granville Hancock when they were trying to do everything by mail. He, he was Bruce was very clear that there has to be a physical polling place. That's the guidance yeah. that he's getting from the state the Department Secretary of State. Is that correct, Bruce? Yeah, because you're going to miss people um, and they need to have a place to go to be able to be included. Yep. So we haven't fully decided what is what the, the polling places are going to look like for both the primary and the presidential election. Um, however, um, there are certain requirements as far as, you know, disinfection and sanitizing and all of that kind of stuff that, that still needs to be worked out. And we've got a little bit of time from, you know, for August, November, but I think the school, the school vote is probably going to help give us some guidance in how that's going to work. The issue uh, is that you've got to get your materials out 10 days before the vote. You've got to have an uh, information meeting five days before the vote. Under 10 uh, days. Pardon? The informational meeting can be under 10 days, according to the attorney. Yeah, well, within five, you know, five or more. So, according to Dina. Okay. The The letter from... Uh, the letter from Bob or whatever says uh, that, that uh, the um, uh, 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 public information hearing has to be presided over by the board and occur within 10 days prior to the vote. So, and then it has to be warned at 10 days prior to the public information meeting. So we still yeah, have I'm just to warn. Report it out to everybody else. So. We still have to warn 30 days out the actual warning, correct? that hasn't changed right so yeah. i think the key at least to me is sounds like Lori and i probably need to set up some time to see if the school is a viable option or i said i heard joanne offer the meeting house as well but sounds like we need to kind of look right now and start to work backwards calendar wise to give some deadlines assuming that you're gonna take some action on the budget tonight so FBUD is uh, going to do um, the 20th. Uh, Stratford's going to do the 20th of June. Uh, and so is FBUD. And then um, Granville and Hancock are going to do the 30th, which is a Saturday um, of June. So the 30th, the 30th is a Tuesday, Bruce. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the May calendar. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so that, those are the dates that have been picked. Okay, if we wanted to do a Tuesday or a Thursday per Lindy's request, we'd be warning the meeting for the 23rd or the 25th or the 30th. Those are the last three Tuesdays and Thursdays of the month of June. And historically, you would want to keep it on a Tuesday because Tuesday is naturally a voting day. Right. That's and that's why the way people's brains are wired. Um, so you get a larger turnout. Right. Um, obviously, the 30th gives us the biggest window. Um, on the other hand, you know, people start going away after school wraps up and that graduation is like the 19th or the 20th. So maybe we want to get anywhere. Yeah. So if the summer program is to start, then we really need to do the 23rd because the summer program starts the 29th at Stockbridge. Okay. If there is one. If there is one, but. Let's, right. let's, let's, let's try to be, be uh, consider and assume there's going to be. There, there, there's going to be something and let's let's plan for that. So if the 23rd, so if the 20, we would we would need to warn this if it's the 23rd, we would need to warn this by May 24th because May's got 31 days or wait, no. So 23, seven days back in May, we'd have to warn it by the 25th if I'm doing my math right. Monday. We so today. do we think we could, do we, do we think we could have a, uh, a, a, a plan together to be able to uh, uh, warn, you know, warn a document that uh, uh, describes how we're voting by uh, by the end of this week. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we would need to we would need to get the recommendations from uh, 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 Lori and Lindy, and then circle back to to to, to approve. Correct. 
All right. Because we need to have the location and everything for our warning. Right. right. I believe and so. And we have the informational meeting as well at this time, or that we can set a, a separate warning for. We can we can we can warn that separately. Okay. I would imagine okay. it would be a virtual meeting, anyways. Right. So we need to we need we need the location of the voting to be able to warn to be able to complete the warning. Is that what you're saying? I believe so. Uh, I mean, for the you know, twenty, we always have where we're meeting. For the 23rd, we're assuming that the bulletin would need to be mailed by the 11th. Is that yeah. correct? That would, is they, it, that would is sound that good. in um, Spalding time frame? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Is that uh, in? Is that acceptable for Spalding to be able to, to print uh, by them? She said if we could get her something by um, the first week in June, yes, she said she could do that. Because I gave her that okay. ballpark. Um, that it's about a week turnaround for them, but okay. it, you know it could be less depending on what they have. They may not have a lot of business, so. Um, but we have a quite a bit of work to do to create that. Oh boy, um, yeah. Any volunteers? <laughs> yeah. I'm, right? I'm doing my best, but I mean, this is not you know this is primarily numbers and explaining them. I mean, I'm sitting down right. with special ed people anyway. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, <clears throat> Well, I think that's the best we can do, isn't it? So are we approving the budget tonight? Um, we Don't can we have to. Why not? Uh, we, need to, we need to approve the budget to have to, to, to approve a warning. Yeah. So we can certainly. Like we got to get these things done. Um, we can certainly look at the budget we have. And I mean, the only open question that I think we still see, I mean, everyone's pretty comfortable with the, the the numbers that, that Lindy and Bonnie and Tara have given us, right? The only open issue still is what are we doing about uh, uh, a, a reserve fund contribution? Uh, I'd like well, to, have... Yeah, go ahead, Ethan, sorry. Well, no, it just sounds like we have to decide if we're actually warning a reserve fund or not. Correct. What Correct. is your thoughts on, on uh, Carl's idea um, of, of uh, putting like that 24,000 into a reserve fund. Uh, you know, I understand both sides of it. I, I'm a little torn because, you know, it is, we, we could potentially have expenses, you know, at the end of the year, well, but we're kind of sitting at, uh, our expenditure reports are showing that we might end up with a surplus anyway, but so we don't need to worry about it. Plus the rainy day fund, because we're going into some hard times. We're, we're going to be in some serious trouble here soon. I mean, here's the other thing is that, to be quite frank, if we put the budget, the item in the warning um, for a special fund, we're going to have to explain, you know, where this money went and how it got there. I think everybody's quite aware of, of the sale of Dandelion and have, have, as we all have, kind of questioned where where that sale money went and what happened, what was the, and, and I know it took a lot of digging from Tara and that was the all the changeover in the office to really track down. So I'm just saying, we we'll just need a good answer. Yeah, that it, that it was just handled differently than any, everybody expected that's, it. Yeah. To, so. Just so we're prepared for that. We're going to need a good answer. Yeah, that's going to be another good explanation for, <laughs> for our book. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of writing on this book. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you don't have any other big projects going on right now. Oh, just many, many. <laughs> Not like you're a teacher or anything now either. Oh, huh? Of course not. No, <laughs> no. Um, so are we approving the ball? Do we? Can we do some motions here? Um, sure. Do we want? I mean, the 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 first piece is we can approve. I mean, we can approve a budget. So we have to do. We 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 would have to have a motion to uh, um, approve the budget as presented. That would leave the tax rate where it was. And then we would have to have a, a motion about whether or not we wanted to uh, add a uh, article that would uh, an article five, mm -hmm. um, which would because uh, here actually I forgot six. 
so I did not ever forward the thing that I wanted to forward. So I'm doing that now. What details, let's take it one at a time. What details do we need to have in a motion that approves the budget? Is it the total amount to it would be, be raised by taxes? We would have to have a, 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 and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm flipping to find the, I've got so many tabs open, I'm trying to find where the budget is. We would need a motion to uh, approve a, uh, a budget for the fiscal 2021 year uh, in an amount of- Four million? Uh, Four million, $391,125. And 40 cents. <laughs> I second it. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, uh, fiscal 2021 20, budget as presented uh, today by Tara uh, in an amount of $4,391,125. Discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the budget signify by saying aye. 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 Um, uh, aye. anyone opposed? Oh, you should do a roll call on it. Yes, you should. Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, uh, Ethan Bowen, how do you vote? Yay or nay? Yes. Janie Feinberg, how do you vote? Yay or nay? Yes. Uh, now the screen just jumped around. Jenny Austin, how do you vote? Yay or nay? Yay. Uh, Amy Wilt, how do you vote? Yay or nay? Yes. Uh, as the chair, I abstain, um, or I'll vote yay. Um, uh, motion carries uh, five to zero. Next, we have to address if we wanted to, um, and this would, we can do this now or we can do, do this when we have the warning. We would need to, when we approve the warning, we need to put the actual articles on it, which means we need to know, um, you know, whether uh, we need to know who the candidates are because we have to put the names of, uh, of uh, candidates that have uh, filed paperwork. So there's a, a, a document that you're supposed to sign with the town clerk, whose name I forget. Bruce, what's that called? Stacy was talking about. Is it a CAW? Uh, I'd have to look it up, Carl. It's not something that, yeah, I'd have to look it up. Um, right. There's no floor nomination. So the suggestion is that um, you know, the board, the, it, you know, the board at least put a candidate forward and then other people can file, file paperwork with the town clerk to, uh, 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 uh run as well, or, you know, they'll be right in lines and people will be able to write in on a ballot, uh, uh, who they might, who they might want. But the advice is that we have, we have a candidate, uh, uh, from each town for each seat. The board, the board has uh, put a candidate forward. Um, I am certainly willing to put my name on the Stockbridge line unless uh, someone else wants to, uh, you know, is uh, really convinced that uh, there's, there's a, 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 someone else that should be there. Obviously anyone else can go and, and, and get with the town clerks and uh, um, add their name to the ballot as well. So it is uh, indeed you, Carl, and uh, Megan Payne, whom, whose term expires in 2020. Okay, so Megan would have to fill out a, a piece of paper, assuming she wants to continue, she should fill out a piece of paper with the town clerk. Um, and I, like I said, I think it's a CAW form that Stacy Peters was talking about, but I, I don't have, uh, I, I don't have those notes in front of me. And uh, somebody, um, she is not president at this meeting. Can somebody take responsibility for uh, letting her know this information? I will. Thank you. I just wanted to tell you that Dina sent a uh, annual warning, meeting warning to um, Carl, I think, and I got a copy of it at uh, four fifty-eight this afternoon. That's the thing. That's the thing. I thought I had forwarded. I'm trying to find it again to send it. Yeah, four fifty-eight, Carl, and it was sent. Well, can you forward it to the board, please, Bruce? I'm 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 trying to talk and read six things, and and yeah. uh, I, I've not been able to to, to send that, that on yet. But yes, there's there's the, the spot where um, you know we have, we have to elect a town clerk. We have to, or a, um, a, not a town clerk. We have to elect a, a board clerk. We have to elect uh, two board positions. We have to uh, pass the budget. Um, we have to have 
the language about uh, bridge loans, and then the fifth piece would be the uh, would be the uh, a piece about if we decided to add it about moving that twenty four seven seven five into the Rochester Building Reserve Fund. Is is uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Is this something we can approve tonight, or do we need a special meeting to do it before this date? We, we cannot. We cannot. Um, approve a warning without improving the without, without approving the whole warning. We can't just approve question okay. five of the warning. So we need a special meeting. We next would. Week. We have to have the information about the polling places in the okay. warning. The so meeting. we'll need. Um, just looking at the calendar, we have to have it warned. And does it need to be posted warned? Yeah. By, what are we looking at uh, by by this Friday? Correct. I thought it was yeah. May 25th, my Monday, I thought is what um, Bruce had just said. Is that not correct? Right, but you have to get the well, warning out by then. First. Do you think you guys can talk with the town clerks? Uh, and Lori and I have already scheduled a time for tomorrow. You know, like Friday or Thursday? I mean. What do you still need to hear from Rochester? Well, how is it going to happen? Pull, we need polling places, right? Yeah, how's it going to happen? So I'm just going to confirm the high school because she's already told me that's her preference. Right. That's what Sandy Haas was saying, that there's a corner of the building that they, she and the select board walked through right. and thought was, right. was, was the, 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 the best location. I'm going yeah. to with, with the building. In one door, out the other. Yeah. Did, right. In the door did to the room and out the door from Jen's room. Did we decide on our method of, of voting? I wasn't clear on that. There was a lot of conversation, but I wasn't clear we made a decision that we're doing mail-in ballots or drive-by voting? You have to do both, Ethan. Because okay. it's an Australian ballot, we have to at least have a ballot available for a voter to call up and get absentee. Okay. Um, just to clarify, we have a physical polling location for Bruce. Yeah, just to clarify, though, it's not a drive-by. They're going to actually go into the building and vote. Okay. I just want to be clear, that's what they're recommending. Right, and I would assume that I would assume that Lindy and uh, and and uh, Lori will come up with a similar recommendation. Whether it's going to be a drive-by with people sheltering under the portico in front of the in front of Stockbridge School, or whether it's going to be you know you you walk in the front door and you know take spaces you know you're you're spaced down the hallway to uh, socially distant polling places in uh, the multi-purpose room, and you're going out that door, or some such, some such you know in one side and out the other arrangement. Right, and uh, I would in that type of, in a drive-by type situation, they would need to uh, what pick up a ballot on one end of the parking lot and drop it off at the other end. You have to have a spot for them to park. You have to have a spot for them to be able to turn around. They have to check in as they pull in, and they have to drop their ballot out and exit out, check off that they voted. The and other, that's the the other lieu of sending everybody uh, a ballot. I mean, do we have to decide? I think that that's more or? of the question of clarification. We're not mailing every single registered voter right. a ballot, right? That's what we've decided, and then we can figure out I the logistics. Think, I don't think we should, honestly. I mean, it is, I, I kind of do feel that it's up to the town clerks so and what they feel is going to be the most logistically uh, work for them. But it just seems like they would do have to do a lot more work trying to figure out. Did somebody have two ba a ballot that they walked in with, plus they mailed one in? Um, Amy, the other issue is with drive-up balloting is that they have to have uh, a, a couple of ADA spots. People who, might have, yeah, voice recognition, hearing issues. So a uh, drive up they could go in the building then and, and have an actual yeah. place. Yeah. I noticed Lori unmuted herself. Yeah. So. You really don't want to mail. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of discussion in the clerks group is that you don't really necessarily want to mail to uh, an absentee ballot to every single voter because it's just it truly is a waste of money because not everybody will vote, and you really want to make sure that if if, if people need an absentee ballot, you've got a way and a mechanism for them to get one, but um, also that there is the ability for them to come in and vote too. So I think Lindy and I can have that conversation tomorrow and come up with a, a reckon recommendation that, that makes some sense both financially and, and logistically for the, for the folks in town. Um, Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, just a, a question. I'm sorry. Is it Leslie? Lori. 
Lori, sorry, excuse me for that. Um, Lori, would it be useful for you to have a conversation with Julie so we have some consistency between that, or is that between Bonnie and Lindy, that conversation? No, sure, I, I can, I, I'll give Julie a call, too. That'd be great. Thank Don't you worry. so much. Yeah. Yeah. I just sent you the warning uh, that Bob Fletcher sent. I hope you got it. Uh, Lindy and Bonnie, I sent you copies as well. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. So are we at the point that we are either A, approving more to go on the warning or B, moving on? Um, we would, we, uh, again, we don't really, uh, if we're not going to do the entire warning today and we can't. It seems. Okay. We'll move on. Then we're moving on. We need to move on. We can't. Can we, are we, are we, are we, are we warning them? I'm sorry. Too many people. What? Go ahead, Lindy. Sorry. I was going to say, when are we trying? Are we trying to meet Thursday? Oh, good. You were saying the same thing I was. <laughs> I figured we were probably talking about the same thing. And is it a meeting, uh, Tara? Like, what's Tara's calendar like and Bruce's calendar like, too, if they need to be present for this? I, I don't know if they do. I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't believe, I, I believe that if they have any concerns, I think they know our direction. And they know that we're going to be, you know, taking a document that that you know and filling in, you know, polling place X, polling place Y. Um, and, and can and we at least email about, it to them in the day? So they can the have thing, some. One of the things that we can do that I've seen before is that we can draw up a draft of that warning. We have one from the attorney. <laughs> when are you doing this, Carl? Everybody. That's what Friday. I was asking, Chair. <laughs> We have to do it by Friday. So, so I have board meetings every night this week except for Friday. Good, no so date night. Thursday night, if you wanted to do it, you would have to do it after the full board if you want my participation. Which is about 6.45. So you could schedule it for 7 to be safe because we got some issues, Bruce. Don't you think that are going to take up some time this week? I don't know of any issues. <laughs> Read your emails. I'll um, send it to you again I'm to remind you. My email right now. <laughs> no. no, I'm not. What <laughs> enter in my mouth? <laughs> Carl Ray's got his hand raised. I mean, I'm not seeing anything on the board calendar for Wednesday. My, are well, we missing something on Wednesday that I know of? Tara might no, have I have a meeting Wednesday night, Ray, for another board who's trying to get their books together for their annual meetings. Remember, so, I have four budgets that still need to be approved, so I'm doing the same thing for four boards. I'm just no, saying, I understand no. that. It's just not on the board calendar is all I'm saying. Because it's um, not a full board meeting. It's a committee meeting. Um, we are also trying to give till Friday to our town clerks and our principals to pull this plan together. Is that correct? Yep. Or can we get information um, sooner than that? And we have to have it written out. And who is doing that writing? I mean, I'm, I can write what's going to come out of Stockbridge, what Lori and I managed to come up with. Okay. I think all we have to have to the warning is the, the the warning is that is is the only thing that really needs to be done by Friday, and yes. that's that's a template. Who's doing it? Um, who's doing it and who's presenting it? Um, the attorney has done it, and we would be uh, we would be reaching back out to the attorney again and get it getting a, a you know giving oh, him that information, and then they would produce the the the, the document for us, and we just say. I mean, the, uh, the, that we like it or we don't. We can probably, I will probably say we want a version that uh, uh, talks about uh, putting 24775 into the Rochester Building Reserve Fund and a version that doesn't. And then we can make that decision. We'll have the document, we'll have both documents. Okay. So so we're, we're good. Then we could meet on a Thursday night after the full board meeting to approve this. Does that seem feasible, Bonnie, Lindy, and... Lori. It does to me because all we're doing for the warning is determining where the place is going to be. The, the, the plan will get worked out later. Who sits where, who stands where. Are you adding place. other articles to the warning, Carl? Because if so, we're going to want to get that language down to Robert. Right. That's what I was so saying. We, add them? I'm going to, I'm going to write to him and, and say, you know, we want one that has a version that moves 24, seven, seven, five to the Rochester <laughs> Reserve Fund and one that doesn't. Because that'll need to be a separate article. That'll be Article Five. 
Okay. The Liberty Scent has four on it, so I'm gonna I'm going to reach out to well, him. You have to have two articles. First, you have to have the article to create the fund. Mm -hmm. We already created the then fund. Then you have to have the article to move the money. We already created the fund. There's a build. We created a building fund for stock, a building fund for Rochester, and a building fund for tuition, secondary tuition. That was all passed in the. Uh, I could send you the minutes, but it's in Joanne's minutes from our very first, uh, very first meeting. The part that David left out was the second piece of that, where you actually. Oh, so this is not the special revenue, the special education revenue fund that you created as a board that you wanted to move those monies to. This is you're putting it in an already created fund. Yeah. Yes. Carl, for the warning, you just need to know the location and the times. Uh yeah, okay. So I needed to know. You know, and when the just the the so by and by time because it's 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 an Australian ballot. It's a it's a fixed window. We would need to know right. the start and the stop time. Right. So, um, does everybody want to think a little bit more about that building reserve fund? Um, or is there any reason why we shouldn't just do it right now and then we don't have to make him create two documents and spend more money? Um. I don't think it's going to be too much more money, but we can certainly, if we want to. Just wondering, uh, if people want more time, that's fine. I just, you know, I was trying to make Thursday night's meeting as quick as possible. Okay. Um, if I, I'm, I am, uh, you know, we can certainly it do it. It is 10 to 9. Okay. So. What is, I mean, what is, what, what's uh, the for people? Do we want me, do you want me to just get the warning that has that fifth article on it? Um, my two cents is yeah. that at this point, and with the uncertainty of the future of finances, um, I really don't know that it makes any difference um, where the money is right now. Okay. That is certainly, we are, you know, the, the uh, best guidance is that we're 20 some cents uh, is going to get added to, to, to our taxes. And I guess, here's, Amy, and my question is, is it important that that fund be funded be, to carry on the lineage or is it important? I mean, what what is the importance just because it was said to be done and thought it was done, that it should be done to complete it? Or is it you really feel that that money should be there? Um, I think it's probably a multi-faceted uh, question there. Um, <laughs> You know, it, uh, so why do, maybe we should just table it for now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I, I want, I mean, I, 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 because, I really do hear you. I just think you're right. I think we've been talking all night. To be heard. <laughs> what? Maybe that's all I need is to be heard and understood because that this side is not often heard or understood. This, 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 this building was sold um, as part of our, our initial merger agreement and it was not necessarily what we wanted to do at the time but we did um so it was a sac kind of a little bit of a sacrifice and so you know all right we'll table it i'll <laughs> i'll table I hear it you. No, I, understand no, I, what you're I do really hear you and... i understand what you're saying too though like we need to, we're, yeah i understand that we, and so that's what's kind of tough so all right yes now understand that uh b b uh, before we completely walk away from this question, understand that um, you know it's a separate article, so you know it could be right. voted up or down. Uh, uh, you know, independently whether it was voted up or down. Right. People could people could easily say no to funding this building fund. That's correct. Exactly. Which, maybe we want to leave it up to them. You know, that's another way to do it. Let the voters' will be spoken. That's always a very good uh, premise. You know. Right. The, we put it out there and we have to sell it in our, in our informational meeting. And that's why I said, we, we need a good answer. Yeah. I think that's something that between now and Thursday you could do is exactly. come up with, if you have a really convincing answer, I'll totally support you. Right. And I, but you do kind of make up a good point of uh, that. This is maybe we do need to just put it out to the voters, to the voters of Rochester and the voters of Stockbridge that they know the history of it. They, they know the idea and, and are, where are we going forward and how are we going to get forward? Um, yeah, and yes. I don't know if this helps or if this just muddies the water, but the, the conversation, somebody made reference to it a, a bit ago that 
we're just in the beginning of some very, very difficult financial decisions. This is not a one yep. year and then it's gone. Probably this is not the worst of it. Um, no. Right. Exactly. Absolutely the, not. I think that's why there's a the lot of things that are going to be forced. Our hand's going to be forced in ways we have no idea of right now. It's why last meeting I asked that question, are you prepared, principals, for significant cuts? Right. And what that means, do you have any plan? Because I do believe that's what we're facing. And 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 we're going to have some very tough decisions ahead of us. Right. Um, and Amy, this goes to your point, and I, I, I do understand what you're saying, because you guys were setting that up just as I came in. And I understood the intent of what you were trying to do. But principals on this side of the mountain that I've been chit-chatting with, they're all talking about hoping they don't have to deplete their reserve funds and building reserve funds and ed reserve funds this year because they know they're definitely going to have to start down that road next year. Yep. So I think if we looked at this a bit more long term, the reality is we're going to be in the same situation. I don't mean to be gloom and doom, but that's just what the numbers are talking oh, about. I think it's absolutely, it's very realistic of us to be thinking right. that way. And, well, and, and yeah, it's going well, to, gonna... you know, thinking about being able to put just a little bit of money in savings, no matter how much it is, because we're going to need it. I, I don't know. I, I, it's, there's so many parts of, of the, of it, you know, I hear you. Okay. okay you no. <laughs> All right. So then uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, we want the two versions on it. We're, 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 we're two versions. We're going to talk about it okay. Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, well, I'm uh, I to talk to the attorney, so I'm good. Um, that brings us to um, we need to uh, act on uh, um, a, uh, a, 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 a well. We can act on well. No, we can't because we can't pass the warning. We have to act on a custodial resignation. Bonnie, you're muted. There we go. I'd like to let the board know that after 11 years of very fine service to the Rochester and then the Arsud School District that uh, Lenny Settlers has decided to retire. And he, his retirement is effective, uh, it was a few days ago. He was going to use out his uh, vacation time and then um, was going to happily head into retirement. So uh, he's done great service for our kids and I just, uh, I wish him all the best and the board needs to just act on accepting his retirement statement. I would I hate to call it a resignation because it's not really a resignation, it's a retirement. I, uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, ex that, that, that the board accept with uh, uh, regret the uh, retirement uh, of, the, uh, of, of Lenny in Rochester. Okay, Discussion. Uh, did I hear a second? Yes, I Janie. Janie. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Um. <laughs> <laughs> let the let the let the minutes reflect that the board uh, the, the the board is uh, very grateful for uh, all his service and all, all the work he's done with our facilities and, 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 and for our kids. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. You're welcome. All right. We now have uh, uh, the uh, second period of public comment. Uh, uh, again, this is a 20 minute uh, block of time. We're gonna ask everyone to uh, speak once and to uh, keep any comments to uh, uh, five minutes or under. Um, we are at two and a half hours uh, of this meeting. Um, so, uh, if anyone has a, a public comment, uh, star six to, uh, unmute. Okay. This is Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Um, I don't know if, if anyone's left on this meeting from, uh, except for board members, cause it's been a crazy meeting, but, um, I would just like to say, no, there's 20 people here. 20 people on. All right, I would just like to say that for the folks that didn't know, the, the meeting committee um, worked real hard up until January, and we came up with a couple of different plans. We begged for meetings, and beyond that, we could never seem to get a meeting date. 
So I don't want people to think that we failed at our project. We worked hard at it. We had good numbers and we did have some disagreements and we needed one more meeting, but we were never, we never got that meeting um, from our chair. So I'm just saying that. Um, other thing is um, comments tonight. Amy said we are going into some hard times and Ethan said, um, significant cuts are going to be needed. And I agree with all of that. So you know where this is going. It's time. It's time to be respectful to our the original uh, plan when we were going to vote on merging, just like some of the other Stockbridge folks had said. Let's stop insulting the Stockbridge voters by pretending that didn't happen and that wasn't promised to us. It is, it's ridiculous that we can't figure this out and have one building in Rochester and one building in Stockbridge. And the other thing I'm going to say that by saying that it was a sacrifice to sell the Dandelion Daycare building, maybe it was a sacrifice for Rochester to do that, but we have a lot of sacrifices as well, like taking on huge debt. So that's all I'm going to say for now. You know, I have a lot more to say, but I am not comfortable with this budget. It seems like there's a lot of uncertainty. It's not been audited. That's insane. They here we are in May and it ha we don't have an audit. Like how I, I don't understand that. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that, um, that I think there was a lot uh, you know what, I'm not even going to say that now because it's just going to cause a few people to come after me and I just can't deal with that. So that's all I have to say and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your comments, Joanne. Thank you for your patience with this meeting and, and uh, I appreciate you sticking it out to uh, to say your piece uh, two and a half hours later. Thank you for your interest in Stockbridge and in our community as well. hope you listen. I really hope you listen. It doesn't seem that you do. The people in this town are tired of paying for this. Point taken. Thank you. Hi, this is Keith again. I have a couple of questions that maybe you can clarify. Sure, Keith. Okay, so we just uh, you just voted on a four point, well, nearly four point four million dollar budget. Um, as it was pointed out by the prior speaker, uh, it is unaudited. Uh, have steps been taken to avoid a repeat of last year? Uh, I believe so. Our business manager has a, has a shortage that she's had more time to be working with the numbers and to be, uh, in particular, um, tracking all the uh, secondary tuitions and making sure that um, we are getting the uh, appropriate uh, uh, equalized people count that uh, led to the, 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 the tax bill debacle of last year. Okay, and the state has confirmed. He, the state has confirmed those numbers. The state locked down the numbers on February 14th and they have not revised them again. Last year, the state continued to revise the numbers through May. Okay, and what's preventing the audit from being completed? At this point in time, you're waiting on me to finalize the final draft of the audit to make sure they're accurate and then I agree with the auditor's statements. And when did you get the that from the auditor? Was extremely long this year because the auditors had to come in and re-audit the closeout of FY18 um, due to the business manager trans transactions or transfers that happened, three business managers within the year and a half time frame. So it caused a long delay for the audit process to occur and they had to do it for all seven of our entities. And if I understood correctly, um we're going to be running a surplus this year as well? My projections based on the end of March was that we are trending towards a surplus, yes. In what amount? I don't have that report right in front of me. Why? Okay. But yeah. the, the, uh, the, the RSUD expenditures uh, report as of 4-30-2020, uh, shows a uh, $113,000 uh, surplus. I'm sorry, you, it got blanked out. I missed that. When I look at the, uh, the uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is Carl. When I look at the RSUD expenditures uh, report as of 4 30, 2020, 
it's projecting. Um, it's, it's an encumbered projection, so it shows what we expect to be spending through the end of the year. Um, that shows a uh, current surplus of uh, a projected surplus of one hundred and thirteen. Four hundred and eighteen dollars. One hundred thirteen thousand four hundred eighteen dollars. One hundred thirteen sufficient enough round numbers. And what's our current? Uh, I guess for lack of a better term, what's the current reserve fund right now? Because there's so many numbers thrown out, I sort of lost track. Um, Stockbridge. Stockbridge has a restricted uh, building reserve fund of a uh, hundred and six thousand dollars. One hundred nine. One hundred nine. That money. Uh, that money is. Uh, uh, restricted for uh, uh, building repairs and maintenance uh, in, in, in on the Stockbridge campus only. Okay, okay, and that one thirteen is for Stockbridge only as well. No, the the, the one thirteen surplus is both is uh, is the unified district surplus. Okay, and how does that money get applied to each of the two uh, different districts? Um, well, it's 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 the one district, and it gets by statute um, the audited uh, the audited surplus. Uh, or the, the 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 draft surplus from uh, uh, two years ago is available as a top line surplus or deficit uh, in this year. So this year, for example, we are we are showing the budget we just passed uh, returns one hundred and forty two thousand uh, dollars to Stockbridge and Rochester taxpayers. Okay, and is that done proportionately since the Stockbridge taxpayer pays more? Um, no, the only reason the Stockbridge taxpayer pays more is because of the common level of appraisal. Um, the, 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 the tax rate is the same. The, the difference is, is that the grand list of Rochester uh, is, is uh, valued at 109% of the state average, and the grand list in Stockbridge is valued at like 101 or 100.7% of the state average. So that, the, the tax rates are the same until you adjust that, that, that property applier for the for the for the town's grand lists, right. So as a Stockbridge resident, uh, I'm penalized by the state because that's how the state does its taxes. I get that, but I also then it's disproportionate because there's two buildings in one of the uh, areas and one building in another area. The budget so, does not take the budget does not take that into account. The budget treats all the assets of the unified district uh, equally. Oh, so in other words. You spend ten thousand dollars on the Stockbridge building repairs. You won't spend more than ten thousand in Rochester. <laughs> uh, we we spend uh, the we 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 spend the uh, building repairs that uh, uh, the administration asked us to spend based on the the, the needs of the building. Okay, um, and also I there was like somebody said something about a three point three cents uh, was it three point three cents increase in your tax rate? Is that correct? Uh, there is a uh, uh, 3.34 uh, cent tax increase in uh, Stockbridge, and there is a 4.1 cent tax increase in uh, Rochester. Okay, so so that the tax rate is projected to go up 3.34 cents for the Stockbridge residents. Yes, and two cents of that is the loss of uh, merger, merger incentive. The merger incentive was six cents uh, last year. It's four cents this year. So the, the real increase in spending uh, in, in tax rate is 1.34 cents in Stockbridge and 2.1 cents in uh, Rochester. Okay, and how does it work when a school district floats a bond? How do the obligations pair out? Um, the obligations pair out to the district. Um, they do not pair out, they do not pair out to the town. So we could not, uh, you could not have a separate bond for uh, 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 Rochester residents. You could not have a separate school bond because you could have a municipal bond. You could not have a separate school bond for Rochester residents versus Stockbridge residents. Okay, and if a point in time came where Stockbridge decided they just wanted to break away from the union, how would the bonds be handled? Uh, yes, you can, uh, um, you can uh, there can be a vote to uh, to dissolve, um, it has to take place, and I'm I I'm, I'm remembering what the attorney said about this, so I may not have these steps exactly. But first, the first uh, uh, Stockbridge in this case would, uh, if Stockbridge chose to uh, to have a vote to uh, remove themselves from the uh, a unified district, once that passed, uh, the same question would then get put put to uh, uh, Rochester voters. Okay, so. How would uh, how would that be initiated? 
Um, you would need to uh, warn a special meeting, and I want to say, I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I can get back to you, Keith, but I can't tell you off the top of my head the percentage of, the percentage of voters that would have to petition to have a special meeting. Keith, I can uh, email you. I've been in contact with some of the state education boards, and I have her, her emails of step-by-step -step what it would take to get out of the merger. Okay. But if, is, that if I, is that a letter from Donna Russo, Russo Savage, the, the AOE attorney? Yeah. Yeah. Then that's the, yeah, that's, that's, that's Bible then. That's, that's, that's the, the proper information. Okay. But, and if I understood what you had just said earlier, if the Southbridge uh, community voted to uh, want to leave the district, it could only happen if Rochester agrees. Yep. Yes. Yep. So basically. And they have votes. Okay. So basically if the union benefits, a portion of this union more than another portion dissolving the district really isn't feasible under the current contract. Well, it's important to say that uh, the state board is also going to be involved in this. Um, if you remember, in some of the cases, they force boards to merge. Now, that wasn't in the case for us, but that was in the case for some of the ones that were late like Barry City and Barry Town and others. Um, so they're going to get a say in this as well. Uh, it, it's not going to be just what the town does. And they, and they get that because they believe that they give educational funding through the Ed Fund to the towns and have some stake in this. So um, that's a part of the process. Okay. I only ask these questions because as time goes on, we just seem to be stuck in the same position. And eventually somebody needs to take a stand where, you know, we either have to get out of this or move it forward. Point and taken. Times, and times are getting difficult, not just for the school district and the children, times are getting difficult for the people who live in Stockbridge and Rochester. I mean, they're suffering too. And all of these considerations need to be looked at. And every year, you know, this goes up 2%, this goes up 5%, this goes up 12%. Same thing happens to me. My medical insurance went up 15% last year. I get it. Things cost more. But you can't just constantly come to us taxpayers and say, oh, it costs us more, so you got to pay more. Where do we get the money from? That is that is a a, a a very valid point and one that uh, many, you know, that, that that we hear from all sorts of people all the time. And so right. you're not you're you're not you're 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 not alone in your sentiment. And uh, you know, it's 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 this is the, the these are, are are difficult times. As I said, the Ed Fund shortfall is expected to to to, to perhaps reach twenty cents. Right, and and you know. And if, if things aren't taken, you know, if you don't take all these things to account when you're doing this, you end up going to hurt the children because people are going to vote no to the budget and you're going to be down to an 87% of where you were last year. Correct. And it's, it's you, you know, you need to take the lead to control. So here's where we're going to cut. So we're going to put forth a budget that is palatable to the residents. Otherwise, the residents are really going to reach a point where they're just going to say enough enough. And it's going to hurt the kids more if you let it go that far. Uh, as I said, your 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 point is very well taken. Um, it's the the these are, are are very difficult times, and our budgets are, uh, you know, it's 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 tough to make uh, to, to to make the budgets work in the best of times. So. You know, we are, we, we, we definitely hear what you're saying about the buildings. We're trying to move forward with, with, with that as best we can. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we're trying to put forth, I mean, in dollar for dollar expenditures, this budget is, you know, it, it's $20,000 less than you spent last year. Yeah, we got in $50,000 less income than, 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 than we got last year because grant funding has been cut. But you know we're trying our 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 best to be as you know to to balance the need of ed giving our kids a good education and 
you know, making that education affordable for the people that live here. Right. And the budget goes down 20,000, but my taxes are still going to go up 3.3 cents. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the, again, the state, the, 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 the state, where's the number? It's always a third party. We need, you need the responsibility has to stop somewhere. I mean, I have to tell you, and I said it earlier, and I don't mean to repeat myself, but based on, on what I'm seeing here, there's no way in good conscience I can vote positively on this. And if I have to take out an ad in the local paper, Spotbridge, stand up, it's time, open your eyes. I mean, how much would it cost? What's the cost of mailing a ballot to everyone to make it easy for everyone to vote? How much does it actually cost? What's the physical cost? I would assume probably about, you know, it's, it's postage there and back, uh, printing costs, maybe a buck. Let's just, you know, you let's. Uh, printing costs really shouldn't count, but you've got to print it anyway, correct? Uh, you'd have to print more of them, but, you know, it's like I said, I, 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 at the high end, I think it can't be more than a dollar. But because I also think you'd probably get cheaper, you get cheaper for bulk rate you, uh, you wouldn't have to just put st stamps on it. But okay, and how many residents do you have to send it to? Uh, we have how many? Uh, we have eight hundred. or No, we have four hundred voters in, in Stockbridge. I think. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, is 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 Lori still on the call? Carl, we're on time. Okay, but see, that's part of the thing that that bothers me. People said earlier, oh. But the cost is going to cost us so much, but you don't have the real number. And if it's 200 households, or I don't know if it's 200 households or 400 people, I'm not sure what it is. But say it's 200 households or three, I don't even think we have 200 households. That's costing at 50 cents, that's $100. Uh, probably, I, I would think, I, like I said, I think we have 200 some. Uh, registered voters in Stockbridge, so yeah, it'd be a couple hundred bucks, and uh, uh, probably another three or four hundred dollars to do the same thing in Rochester. Um, they're they're sending ballots to everyone in Granville and Hancock because they're concerned about uh, uh, their their uh, uh, the, the the elderly and the population uh, coming into to, to, to polling places. And I think we should do the same thing, so maybe we can get a better reading on how our constituents really feel about this budget. You know, and the other thing that bothered me, I'll be, I'm going to be very honest, and I'm trying, I'm, you know, I granted you guys are doing the best you can, and you're trying to do a great job, and I appreciate all of that. Um, but you want to warn, and you have that extra $24,000. There should be no doubt that you want to put that out there so the voters know. Not that, oh, maybe we shouldn't, you know, put it in the warning. Maybe we should. You should put it in 100%. It's taxpayer money. Right. The, 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 the guidance that our business manager uh, has been giving us is that um, when you're not, especially when you're not uh, absolutely sure of, 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 of audited expenses, if the audit, if the audit uh, 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 swings the other way, then you're, you're, now, uh, you're now looking at a, at a deficit. Um, then but we shouldn't be voting on a budget, a budget if, that, if that's what your concern is. Okay. Uh, again, point taken. Um, we will be having, uh, you know, the conversation Thursday night, um, and it'll be warned. So you can certainly, uh, you can certainly uh, 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 participate in that meeting as well. Definitely. I think we are, uh, 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 Ethan. Did you just How are we made aware of the meeting, like the dial-in numbers and all of that? How can I make sure I'm um, on a list, or I can at least go someplace and find it? Because if it wasn't for a last-minute call from a neighbor, I didn't even know about this. Uh, the warnings are uh, posted. Uh, um, where do we post our warnings, Lindy? <laughs> so, um, well, typically they go in the post office and the town office, but that's kind of difficult right now. And the school, that's kind of difficult right now, Keith. Um, so I've been posting them on the school Facebook page, and then someone pointed out that not everybody accesses the school Facebook page. So I also posted it on Stockbridge Connections as well this time. And it's all available on wrvsu.org, the school calendar there. You can see all the, 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 the meetings. 
Now you have okay. to find, you have to look for the ones that say RSUD because that's the that's the SU wide calendar, but they all it, it is all available online there. Okay. Do you post in the Pittsfield Post Office as well for Stockbridge? We do not. We do not. That's uh, Pittsfield. Uh, uh, Pittsfield puts their their meetings there, but we just post it in Stockbridge and Rochester. Okay, because there's a whole contingency of people who live in Stockbridge but have mailing addresses in Pittsfield just because of logistics ah. and geography. Like I hardly ever go. I don't go to the Stockbridge post office because they don't want to say, come on. <laughs> what? All right. Well, thank you, Keith. Um, does anyone else have any public comment? Well, I guess I, I do. do. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Caitlin McKinstry. Yes. I just want to address uh, when I, you know, a point was brought up in the mill in the meeting that my comment about building versus staff, uh, the board. Yes, it is that black and white, because in the end, the board who is voted to represent the voters has not made the decision that was agreed upon by the voters when they voted for the merger to keep this building which means that the voters are not happy, so we vote down your budget. That includes a third building. This means that it is directly your choice to risk jobs because you are forcing us to vote down your budget because we were not delivered what we were promised. So that is the only way that at this point we can get the board to listen to us as if we shut down your budget and force you to look and listen to what we're saying. My second point, my question is, are there any more incent incentives that are going to be disappearing from the budget? Um, what do you mean any more incentives? You mean... Well, you said we are losing an incentive. Oh, we're losing, yes, the, the the way the mer the way the merger worked, the first year of the merger, we got an eight cent uh, discount. The second year of the merger, uh, this current year, we got a six cent discount. The budget going forward has a four cent discount, and then the fourth year of the merger, the uh, uh, um, twenty one twenty two year, we will have a a, a two cent a, a two cent uh, merger incentive. So out of the four cents that uh, the Rochester budget went up, two cents of that was because of the loss of that incentive. Out of the okay, no, that's fine. I don't, I don't need that information. I don't care that much about that. So, but my point is, um, were the loss of the incentives calculated out and shown as what it act, what the merger was actually going to cost? Was that actually represented in the merger when the merger was presented as being a more affordable option. There yeah. was, yeah, there was a, there was a whole a lot more expensive. So we're done good. Okay. Documents show that at this point we would have been up over, I, I would need to find it to give you exactly, but it, it showed, I believe we were up to a dollar 70 already at this point. You can't go by that. Well, if you're, you can't have it both ways. Yeah, but that is ridiculous. That was not, that was, that was, that was part she of the lies we were told. Okay. She asked the board. Try, to, try to speak one at a time. And we've also tried to let everyone just speak once. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you for your thoughts. Um, does anyone else have any? Well, if, if you'd let me speak, I have one more question. How far the threshold are we monetarily? Uh, this budget. Or do you have that there? Give me a minute, I can find it. Uh, the problem is, is that she doesn't subtract out, I believe, all of the possible um, deductions that we have. It, she only reduces enough to get us there. You see, if you go down, if you add them all together, of what are all possible uh, deductions for the teacher's retirement and all that. It was a simple question. How much under the, I mean, we're going to budget. You've all approved it. How much under the threshold are we? 
The threshold is $18,756, and the per people spending with this budget is $18,863.85. So two kids could move in, two high school kids could move in, and we're done. We're over the threshold. Yep. Am I right? Um. No, it doesn't exactly work like that because when they if, if high school kids move in, they also raise the ADM uh, actually a little bit higher than uh, than their actual count because a high school kid counts as like one point three as an equalized student or one point two rather. Okay, so, so three. It, 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 you know, yes. Well, it's it's a pretty tight budget. Carl, I actually think dollars. That's pretty tight. Carl, I actually think they set. Whether you're in the penalty or not, at the based on the budget that you approve, I don't believe that expenses you incur after a budget has been set, such as pupils moving in, push you into the penalty. Yes, no, I, I, I was trying to answer the question that way. What I was trying to say was that was that uh, going forward, is that yes, we are we are very close to the uh, to the threshold. Um, you know, going forward, if someone moved in, that would not necessarily put us into the penalty. You're okay. absolutely right. That was a bad example, but if we need to spend $18,000 or $19,000, which could happen very easily with a broken pipe or something like that, then, I mean, this is a tight budget. It is. Because we want to have the, we, 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 we want to, uh, you know, keep the spending to a minimum. Wow. So this is okay. This is Rob Gardner. Is uh, have I got a space? You do, Rob. Go ahead. So I just, I only wanted to say two things. First, that uh, it's it's great to hear from Joanne again, my partner on that committee, and I would disagree with her as to her <laughs> Thanks, uh, guys, impression Rob. of the um, of the success of that committee. I thought it was a failure. And second of all, I just want to thank you guys for working uh, on this difficult. This difficult work, I know how hard it is for you. I appreciate all the time and heartache you're putting into it. That's all I have to say. And good night to you too, Joanne. God love you. Yeah, I love you too, Rob. Okay, thank you, everybody. I think uh, I think uh, unless there's someone else that has has not spoken and has something uh, to, to 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 add, uh, we should uh, adjourn this meeting. Our, we have a special meeting. Uh, uh, that we will warn for 7 p.m. on uh, uh, Thursday, the, uh, what, so that's the 21st? Is that Carl, correct? We had a non-public, too, I think. Yeah, Carl, yeah. We, have to, we have to, uh, we have to uh, finish with the public and tell them when we're having our next meeting and then uh, move into our non-public. Yes, Carl, Thursday is the 21st. Okay, so we will have a, uh, a, a meeting to uh, approve the warning on uh, a special meeting uh, via Zoom uh, or via uh, Google Meet at uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday, the 21st. Um, we're going to go into uh, non-public sessions. So thank you, everybody, for participating. I hope we uh, will see you then. Um, Ray, let us know when uh, when uh, we are just, you know, Orca is gone and we are just uh, bored. Or to, 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 I'm sorry, actually, the first thing I need to do is we need to entertain a motion to enter executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Do I so hear moved. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to move into non-public se uh, uh, session to discuss a uh, personnel matter. Thank you, everybody, for attending the uh, open portion of our meeting. Shortly. <laughs> All right. We have come out of a, a, a executive session. Um, you know, yes, everyone is. Everyone is is really really uh, at edge about this building. I'm just not sure. I, I personally don't, you know, don't know how we can, how we can handle the situation in a, in a timely fashion and be, and be realistic short of just, you know, saying it's, you know, we're going to knock down this building for the, for the cost in this, uh, uh, you know, here, and we're going to just put everyone there. And I think that's, 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 that's a tough sell. And you know, understanding the bonding and understanding how to do that, um, you know, is, is okay. it, we're going to have a hard enough sell once we do decide on a building of raising the money 
to fix whatever building we choose. Right. Um, so that's a whole nother part of it. Mm. But um, I, 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 I think we've sort of run out of polite alternatives. I mean, you say flip a coin and in some ways there's arguments you can make either way. You know, there, you can say the future of school education in this valley is the high school building. Um, and we should hold on to it for dear life, which is what I think we've sort of been doing is this sort of, you know, sort of back door. Um, but it's definitely not. Um, and we, you know, we, we, we got shot in the foot and we go to do all this community engagement. We had all these plans and it's just too slow. That's what we're hearing again and again. It's too slow. I think you're, we are in a crisis. I mean, you know, we were, a crisis is going to force us to make a decision. I don't have yep. the right answer, but some of the decision may happen naturally and that quite frankly, all specialist teachers may for the foreseeable future be traveling into kids' classrooms and kids yep. not traveling through the hallways. So that might make a decision and maybe oh. it's time to approach uh, Rochester town uh, to see if they even really have an interest in that high school building with the idea that maybe we would still use the music space and we would pay $500. I don't know. I'm making up a number. Um, well, from the meeting that that one meeting that we were really hoping Carl said to it today to get up and running was a group of community members who were excited, who wanted the building. There were multiple groups. There was the seniors that wanted the building. There was childcare that wanted building we were so excited about this unfortunately we met we were getting ready to meet again and and suddenly COVID happened and so you know that just really threw everything out the window right um, I just I have I, a hard time with that we need more I hear what you're saying Lindy of that possibility that we're going to be going into classrooms more I'm actually wondering, do we, are we going to need more space so the kids are sitting farther apart? Or are we going to actually need to have more square footage? You know, and it's just. Well, that's not possible in Stockbridge. It is through the use of multi-purpose room and different, we, we divide kids up in the library. I just want to say, Amy, you like froze. I, I don't know if you had more to oh. say, but you you froze. Well, where did I freeze? I just, I'm so just don't know about the future. And you mentioned about things coming into the classroom, existing classrooms. And I'm wondering if now with, we're going to need to social distance more and we're going to need bigger classrooms and we're going to need to divide the class up more. And we're going to actually need more square footage to be able to teach them all at once to only have five kids in a classroom. I sent you the article that was enclosed in some of the European schools that are opening up and what they're doing, and they are ahead of us. Um, and that's the purpose of it, is to be able to see what's going on over there. Um, um, but I agree, we do need to figure out a way to... Bruce, I mean, yeah, I, I, can, I know what my uh, adopted son Jesse's doing in Taiwan, but what are they? They're social distancing, they're testing temperature, um, they have masks. What else are they doing? Um, well, you can see actual pictures in some of the articles uh, of them, the classroom rearranging, uh, rearrangements that have been done. Um, and there's, I think France is in there. I, I think maybe Italy uh, and one of the Scandinavian countries, maybe it's Denmark. Um, you know, and what, what each of them are doing, if you take a look, it's in odds and ends. Uh, um, okay. Carl, I really want to let Ray go home. Uh, do we have to? Uh, I agree. We have to we act on what we did in non-public, took no action or whatever it is, I guess. Right. Um, uh, we, we took no action in non-public. Um, we've set our next meeting time for Thursday at 7. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. This was okay. not fun. It was not. <laughs> um, all right. We will uh, gather again on Thursday. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray.
Well, thanks, Tara. Yeah. Take care. Andy and Bonnie, board members, thanks.